KHTKAM Sacramento, KYMX HD2 Sacramento. From the Power Business Technology Toshiba Studios, your flagship station for the Beam Team. Should we light the beam? Light the beam, baby. <laughs> That time. that time. Time for Styles and Rockets. You can join the show by texting 916 339 1140. Find us on YouTube at Sacktown Sports 1140. It's time for Alan Styles and Chris Watkins. Yes, yes, yes. On a Wednesday, Styles and Watkins taking you up to 2 p.m. Chris Watkins, how you doing? What's Great. so funny? No, it's just this is the second time. <laughs> Two days in a row. Two you days looked in a row. at your watch to figure out what day it is. It's fine. I mean, literally, as we were walking back, uh, me, Simone, and Brendan were walking back to our cars yesterday after the game. Mm-hmm. I straight up asked him. I was like, wait, wait, wait. Today's Wednesday, right? Like, tomorrow's going to be Thursday. That's what I'm saying. I'm so thrown off. But, uh, yeah, no, I feel you. It just it really made me laugh. That's what I'm saying. I And I try to do it. I try to do it. Subtly, I know. Clearly, I'm sorry. you're still I'm just, catching me, me calling so me out on sorry. the air. <laughs> I'm sorry, because now, that's just the vibe today. Now I have to, yeah, that's also true. <laughs> now, and now we're just going to continue having you know the, the conversation about it. You got Nate Littlefield behind the glass for us today as we take you up to 2 p.m. talking all things Kings. Also, Stefan Diggs finally gets his way, he's just a guy Again. who is never happy and he finds himself with CJ Stroud. In Texas with D'Amico right. Ryans with the Texans, and that will be must see TV for about two years yeah, before probably. before Stefan is is annoyed with that situation as well. Tank Dell taking too many catches That's from right. him, too many targets and things like that. But first and most importantly, the Kings take care of business 109 to 95 in a game where I'm gonna be honest with you, man. It just looked like the Clippers didn't want to be there. And, and I was talking to some people last night and I got some sources here and if things don't go well, and even if they do go well for the Clippers, it's probably the end of the Clippers as, as they currently stand. And what a weird situation for them, but they looked a bit disinterested for majority of the game. Yeah. Yeah, No, Brendan was telling me before the game, I guess without Kawhi Leonard, uh, their defensive rating is, is, completely in the tank. And yeah. I mean, I guess they, they had also just in general slipped as a team here recently. I looked it up and, and we asked law Murray who we, we got to talk to yesterday at the game as well. Um, you know, they they were first place on in, in the beginning of February and they've since gone 13 and 13 They're They're a team that's just slid down the standings really uh, this past couple months. And, and, you know, the Kings took advantage, which is yeah. just not something we've been able to say all year. Right. Like typically, the, the other team has their star out, and we're talking about how the Kings are going to blow it on that night. And that was not the case yesterday at all. They took care of business. That run in the third quarter, I think it was, really separated the game, and, and they just never looked back. It was it was a great performance, really, especially the continuation of the, the defense that we've been talking about these past couple weeks. Yeah, and whether it was Davion Mitchell or Keegan Murray, and what we do have the call – from our guy, Kyle That's Draper, right. by the way, we will definitely play that for you probably multiple times today as Keegan <laughs> Murray putting guys on posters. Keegan Murray with with just, I guess, low-key athleticism. Is that how we would put it? Low-key athleticism? Is that sneaky athletic? Sneaky athletic. Come I think, on. I think he Wait, would fit what? in that category. And just That's a great win to. all around. Sabonis doing what he does. Deer and Fox just steadying the ship as well. And it's just a solid win. And now... We're finally here, Chris, and we'll talk more, obviously, tomorrow, which is Thursday. That's right. And the Kings will have the Knicks. No OG, but they will have the Knicks. And, Chris, we're finally going to have the conversation, and it's finally here, this double gauntlet that we've been talking about for about a month. Now there are two. There's this one, and then there's it's Suns Pelicans or Pelican Suns, mm-hmm. something like that, which is what next week. Next week. So, Alan, let me tell you something. Yeah, I found this out yesterday. Okay. The NBA C, the last regular season game for the Kings mm-hmm. is next Sunday. That's crazy. That's insane. Next Sunday. Next Sunday is the Kings versus Portland Trailblazers on April fourteenth. Wow. That is the last regular season basketball game. That flew by. It didn't fly by, yeah. but it also did fly by. Yeah. And at that point in time, they probably still might not have things figured out, right? <laughs> they might go into that game with yeah. that game having implications. So that's how important every game is. And for the Kings to get this W, 
the way they did on their home floor right. against a team that they could have easily lost to. And I, and I said early on, it's, they look disinterested. Don't let them get interested. Just, yeah. just put them away, and that's exactly what the Kings did. And now it's time. That's right. For Frank Fax. That's right. You can go read uh, post game recaps over at techtownsports.com, written by our good friend Frankie Cardicelli, who will not be in today for the uh, Kings roundtable. Yes. I think we're, we're still efforting uh, to see if Brendan's going to come in today as well. Might have to move that to tomorrow. Uh, but let's get into these Frank Fax. Thanks to a group effort that saw five players score 14 plus points. Uh, the Sacramento Kings picked up the 109 95 win over the Los Angeles Clippers that capped off a five game homestand with one of the most significant victories of the year. Alan, does that feel hyperbolic to you? Did yesterday feel like one of the biggest wins of the year? Based on what's at stake, it yeah. definitely was one of the yeah. biggest. I don't absolutely. know about the biggest, but definitely no. one of. Yeah, absolutely. I think it was it was big. I mean, we were talking about yesterday just keeping keeping the momentum going into the road uh, as they're about to face the Knicks and then the Celtics. Mm -hmm. uh, you kind of didn't want to go into that feeling the weight of losing Malik and, and Kevin. So feeling good on the way uh, down to the East, or I guess over to the East Coast. Uh, definitely really big for them to have, again, five players score 14-plus points. Not many times this season, uh, or especially recently, that they've been able to say that. The Kings' second unit consisting of Davion Mitchell with 14 first-half points, Trey Lyles with nine first-half points, and Alex Len with five rebounds in three blocks, including one big one on Russell Westbrook in that first half, helped Sacramento to open a second quarter uh, on, on, I'm sorry, the second quarter on a 20 to four run that put the Clippers in a 16 point hole, which again, the Kings never really looked back from. This is the second time in Davion Mitchell's career that he has had uh, four plus made threes in a single half. Both games have taken place over the past month, last night against the Clippers. And then on March 6th, when he was four or four in the first half against the Lakers, we've been talking about Davion's three point shooting and uh, how much that's improved and how mm -hmm. big that is for the Kings and, and how they've, uh, uh, they've been able to play recently and especially just keeping Davion Mitchell on the floor, right. hitting his shots is a big part of, uh, of coaches ability to do that. Uh, bench play was key for the Kings on Tuesday as Sacramento racked up 39 bench points in their win. Uh, again, with efforts from Trey Lyles, Alex Len and Davion Mitchell Sabonis finished yesterday with a, with his third 2020 double double of the season. That's tied for the most in the NBA. He had 22 points, 20 rebounds, and almost had a triple-double with nine assists over 35 minutes. Uh, he continues his impressive streak of 58 consecutive double-doubles, and he has a league-leading 71 double-doubles this season, which is one away, a single double-double with a week to go, mm -hmm. a week and some change to go, to tie Hakeem Olajuwon's single-season record of 72 double-doubles in one season. Just ridiculous uh -huh. uh, from Demonis Sabonis. Keegan Murray has now taken 18 field goal attempts in back-to-back -back games during Keegan's career so far. He has never taken 18-plus shots in back-to-back -back games until last night. That's exactly what we've been talking about with Kevin Herter, Malik Monk out, Keegan Murray just being more aggressive, looking for a shot. Honestly, I don't think in, in my mind right now, Keegan can take a bad shot. Yeah. It's him just putting up volume and not being afraid to look for his looks. Uh, it is incredibly important. And that number right there is exactly a representation that Keegan is doing exactly that. Again, 18 field goal attempts in back-to-back -back games, first time in his entire career. Sacramento outscored LA 46 to 30 in the paint and held the Clippers to 36% shooting inside the key, which is absolutely incredible. I think I saw last night the Blazers uh, have the lowest paint percentage and they're somewhere in the mid 50s. So to hold uh, a team to 36% in the restricted area is insane. Mm -hmm. uh, Kings out rebounded LA as well, 56 38, while pulling down 20 offensive rebounds last night, which is tied for their second highest total of the season. And uh, I believe the Clippers had a game earlier this year where uh, they won, but they had zero offensive rebounds. And it was the first time in NBA history that a team had ever won a game while having zero offensive rebounds themselves. So clearly uh, that's that's been a problem for the Clippers all year is just kind of getting uh, really just murdered on the offensive glass. And to me, that comes down to effort yeah. in, in, in some capacity, right? I mean, I, 
the Clippers to me, and we sat here on these airwaves and we were worried when they were rolling. Yeah. I'm not really worried anymore. It's easy to say when Kawhi isn't playing, but it just, it felt off. I've heard Paul George isn't happy and you're not probably going to have to deal with the Clippers unless you, you both hey get man, we slip deeper. into the five seed. You get into the five seed and we'll talk about what that would take a little bit later. But I, to me, you said the same thing about Keegan Murray and 18 field goal attempts. The, one of the Keegan Murray has taken 18 field goal attempts in back-to-back games yeah. during Keegan Murray's career. He has never taken that until now. I say the same thing. I see eight threes from Trey Lyles. Yeah. Put them up. Yeah. Put them up. I mean, there's, there's nobody else to take these shots. Exactly. And Trey Lyles, Hey, that's why they, they gave you that money. That's why they, they brought you back because yep. they think that you can be a part of this and, and really help. And that, and you're running out of options yep. here. I mean, we'll we'll get into Davion and his ridiculously hot shooting, and all of that jazz. But at the same time, he might not have that every single day. So somebody, every single day, there's going to have to be somebody else to step up and yep. replace what you're missing with Kevin Herter and Malik Monk. And last night it was Trey Lyles and Davion Mitchell. And of course, I mean Sabonis even getting the 22. That's that's crazy. That's more than he yep. normally does, it right? Is. So. All, all of that is good. And most importantly, Chris, back to your stat from yesterday, De'Aaron Fox got the magic number, That's seven right. assists. That's right. Right on the dot, I think, right? He finished mm-hmm. with seven assists. Uh, that now moves the Kings to 21-3 and three on the season when De'Aaron gets uh, seven-plus assists. So I, I think that's definitely the number to look out for the rest of this year is De'Aaron sharing the wealth. And then, yeah, hopefully, uh, like you said, they just have somebody else uh, you're going to need at least probably two, maybe three guys mm-hmm. uh, knocking down some threes to just help help the offense stay afloat, really. When we return, we are opening up the phone lines, 916-339-1140. If you want to be a part of the conversation, all guests and callers, join us from the Folsom Lake Honda hotline. Folsom Lake Honda, your one stop, Honda shop. The Sacramento Kings play here. <laughs> Triple, Sacramento takes the lead. Outstanding ball movement by Sacramento. Every triple, every jam, every Kings win. Sabonis with the jam over the Joker. He's got the three-point shot. Get your Kings fix all season long. Right here on your home of the Sacramento Kings. Here's a steal by Fox, the breakaway. He's got the rip with the left hand. Sacktown Sports at SacktownSports.com. The NBA app is everyone's app. Every fan of every team. Oh, my goodness. Everyone who follows LeBron, Tatum, and Embiid in the app. Every warrior who's ready to go to battle over three-point percentages. Every streetwear king who's here for the tunnel fits. Every young buck, nugget, and grizzly who wants to take a peek behind the scenes of the league. And everyone else on this floating basketball we call Earth. Download the NBA app today. Available in the Google Play, Apple app, and Android stores. Country in the Park is back May 17th and 18th at Cal Expo with Brantley Gilbert, Dustin Lynch, Jay Cohen, Walker Hayes, and more. Tickets start at just 46 bucks. Country in the Park May 17th and 18th at Cal Expo. For more information, visit citpfest.com. Brought to you by Fiddy and Fiber, Dawson Oil Company. And good guys heating and cooling. Join Alan Styles, Chris Watkins, and the Sacktown Sports Street Team on Monday, April 8th from 5 to 7 p.m. at Fieldhouse American Sports Pub for some basketball madness and their mouth-watering full menu. 1310 Fulton Avenue. See you there. This segment is brought to you by Kia of Vacaville. Check them out at kiavacaville.com. Sports. Call or text at 916-339-1140. The Kings take care of business 109 to 95. And one of the most important things, and we have some sound coming a little bit later, one of the most important things that Coach Mike Brown talked about in his, his post-game presser last night was that we're learning that we don't have to we don't have to win by scoring 120 points or more 
we can win in different ways. And I think that's incredibly important because as we saw during the playoffs last season and what he said as well is that you're not always going to have the points ready for you. You're not, you're not always just going to be making every shot and, and things like that. And this is what he had to say. We got to sound a little bit later. The thing I like about it is how you win in the playoffs. You don't win in the playoffs by scoring 125 points. That's fool's goal. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, you I, I do love to hear that. I think that, you know, it's great to have that in your locker, the the ability to know that, hey, if we need to get into a shootout, we 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 definitely can do that. But it's being versatile. It's 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 the ability to say, OK, you know, yeah, l- look at the playoff series against the Warriors last year. The shots didn't fall in the same way that they did during the regular season. I think the Kings did a good job of adjusting on the fly and still figuring out how to scrap out victories in that series. But mm-hmm. You know, sometimes that was just the first round. Who knows if that what happens if that happens in the second round or the third round? Mike Brown's talked about how, you know, again, realistically, they're not going to win a championship this year, but it's about building and learning habits that will help you later on in the future. And this is one of those things of, of learning and understanding there's more than one way of winning a basketball game. And, and that is is on the defensive end and it's not pretty it's not what gets you into the nba definitely you have to show out on offense to to kind of get your foothold in the nba but you know defense is is it's a cliche but it wins championships and i think that's uh all mike brown has tried to instill into this team and uh the fact that they're now winning games while playing good defense i think is is the best proof of concept you need to get these guys to buy in even more last season Obviously, Kevin Herter coined the name the Beam Team, That's right. and, and there was the theme. And this is a bit of a different theme, and I don't, I don't know that they are taking this on as a theme. But he said it twice now, from the from practice two days ago, and then last night in the pregame presser. And I might get this tattooed, Chris, because this Ooh. is a bar. Oh, that's right. You were. This is a bar this. right here. Adversity brings opportunity. That is Coach Mike Brown. I don't know if that's a Coach Mike Brown original. Maybe, I, maybe I'm maybe i late on that, and, yeah. and it came from somebody else, and he adopted it. But adversity brings opportunity, and that's opportunity for one Trey Lyles, who played 26 minutes, yep. 15 points, 3 of 8 from the three-point line, 6 of 11 from the field. Adversity brings opportunity. Davion Mitchell, 5 of 10 from the field, 4 of 7 from three-point range. And, and Coach was very open. He said, well, that's because Davion's playing. He said there was a time where Keon was playing well and right. Davion got out and, and and couldn't get in the ball game. So he's not even and, – and I think that's a, another part of this theme that he never gives off that he's incredibly impressed. He always gives off that – I I knew that you had this in yeah. type of swag. Yeah. You know what I mean? What he says to De'Aaron all the time. Mm-hmm. He's like, I'm not going to you know, gas up Fox when he has 28 points because he says – that's what I expect you to do, right? And you should do that every night. So I, I'm i just excited for the Kings and how they went on to win and the way that they won. But somebody on the text line, Chris, is not Ooh. too excited. Oh, no. 916, this is our guy Folsom. Mike, I'm sorry, but I'm bored with the Kings style of play. All these threes make them a make or miss team, not a winning style unless you have Steph Curry, mm. although I'm impressed they won last night. They made one more three on 15 more attempts. You would have guessed they lost by 10 points, but dominated boards and had a ton of second chance points. Not pretty. Well, Folsom Mike, it, there's all, there's almost a little bit of just going back and forth there because this is the this is kind of the new version of them. Yeah. Who who is going to penetrate? Right. Whenever we have these conversations about the three shooting, that's how this team is built. Yeah. So especially with Malik Monk yeah. out, and to a lesser degree, Kevin Herter, who is yeah. really good at back cutting and things like that. That's just what it is. And I told and I and I said to you, Chris, last night, I said, man, it just it does it does look like they're just running the same thing, same thing, and and people are just chucking up threes. That's just how they're built right now. I mean, yeah. Davion is really the only other guy besides De'Aaron and with the ability to penetrate. Yeah, totally. And I mean, they they kind of have to chuck it up because go and, ahead. And just real quick, yeah. Whenever we have these conversations, it's as if we just ignore Sabonis because he doesn't shoot threes. No, he doesn't. So right. there's a whole avenue right. and, and those are twelve shots right there that, that are, are not that are not threes. Right. Besides, he did take what did he take? Right. He yeah, took I think three he took last three night, last night. He is, never does, yeah, never. but we can't ignore the fact that they yeah. do have an inside presence with Sabonis. Yes. 
outside of that, sure. But now you're missing Kevin Herter and Malik Monk. So right. this is just what it is. Yeah. Also, I mean, if these guys are going to continue to be, uh, uh, I mean, a prolific offense as well, which they even even then they haven't really been that. They only put up 109 points yesterday, which is not to their normal standard. Uh, you have to take threes. I mean, threes are worth more than two, especially in today's NBA. Everybody is going to try and take, uh, and Mike Brown said it the other day, especially now with where they're at, they're going to lean a lot more towards being closer to that 43-point attempt number than that 30 uh, that they've been here kind of recently before Malik and and, uh, and Kevin got hurt because you just need a little bit more of, of, of that variance. Like if the Kings are just going to get twos and twos and twos, that's fine, but they might lose – uh, the scoring battle, they just need to hit threes right now. And that's why it's so huge that you have seven threes or whatever they finished with. I believe it was seven threes off the bench from uh, just from Davion and Trey. Mm-hmm. They they have to shoot threes right now to to keep the offense afloat. I would feel the opposite. I would feel optimistic because if I you're telling like, me, even though yeah. even without Kawhi, you're telling me that this team beat the beat the Clippers 109 to 95 yeah. without Malik Monk, Without Kevin Herter, yes, they were missing Kawhi, and they shot 28% from three, yep. and it was never really close. Yep. How could you not feel good about that? A couple a couple weeks ago, a, a month ago, whatever it was, yeah. that's probably an L. Yeah. That's probably an L. Yeah, there's a limit to, okay, when they shoot this poorly, they they can't win. Yep. But I, I think the lower you get, that's the really better true. sign that it is. Exactly. Yeah. And, and okay, if most teams these days shoot under 20% from three, they're probably not going to win. No. That's exactly. just what it is right exactly. now. Exactly. Yeah, 100%. I mean, if you're not making shots, it's it's tough to win. You know, at the end of the day, the, the game is to hit more, shot, score more points than the other team. And if you're not scoring, it's going to be hard to win. But if you can figure out how to win when you're not scoring – that means that you're playing two sides of the ball. And that's a huge, huge step of improvement for this team and definitely not something that that you should be afraid of or, or not lean into. This is absolutely a lot better for the Kings uh, to, to play in this style of basketball. And it's going to be fascinating to see them play the Knicks because we saw them play uh, a version of Knicks basketball when they came here to Sacramento. But seeing the Kings now leaning more towards that Nick style of basketball. How ugly is that going to get on Thursday? That could maybe be like a, you know, we've seen the Knicks get into some 80 to 85 games. I wonder if, uh, if maybe Thursday is going to have that in store. Coming up next, Davion Mitchell has been ridiculous, but just how ridic- ridiculous will explain. Styles and Watkins, Sacktown Sports. Subscribe to Sacktown Sports on YouTube and watch the Carmichael Dave Show with Jason Ross, Styles and Watkins, and the Drive Guys live Monday through Friday from six to six. Plus, view archive shows and exclusive content. Subscribe at YouTube.com/slash Sacktown Sports. Jiffy Lube has a special promotion going on right now. Simply purchase a Pennzoil Platinum Full Synthetic Oil Change at Jiffy Lube and receive a $25 e-gift card from popular brands for food, gas, and more. It's that easy. Simply purchase a Pennzoil Platinum Full Synthetic Oil Change and receive a $25 e-gift card. So basically, going to Jiffy Lube can get you a free lunch or a pizza for dinner. That's what we call added value for the consumer. That's why Jiffy Lube is number one in the greater Sacramento area for oil changes. Visit JiffyLube.com for more details and valuable coupons today. When you take the time to shop at Folsom Lake Honda, there's one thing you'll always find. Happy people ready to serve you. As a family owned and operated dealership since 2009, customer service is our number one priority. Our customers love doing business with us and you will too. Looking to own or lease? During the spring sales event, drive a brand new Accord or Civic. Visit us today at FolsomLakeHonda.com Your one-stop Honda shop. Folsom Lake Honda Yeah! Your one-stop Honda shop So you just used bug spray in your home. Now what? Well, between the waiting and waiting for things to dry up and keeping your family away from the mess, it hits you. You could have used Zevo. Unlike other bug sprays that stick around, Zevo goes from kill to clean in seconds. Plus, it's safe for use around people and pets when used as directed. Zevo, people friendly, bug deadly. Getting your biggest tax refund from Jackson Hewitt can lead to some spirited reactions. Jackson Hewitt, yeah! Jackson Hewitt is so sure they'll get you your biggest refund that if they don't, you get your money back plus a hundred bucks. Jackson Hewitt, yeah! Switch to Jackson Hewitt and we'll beat what you paid last year, even if you filed online. Hewitt, yeah! Ain't nothing to it. Switch to Jackson Hewitt and pay less for tax prep, guaranteed. 
Proof of prior year payment required when filing. New clients only at participating locations through April 7th. Terms at jacksonhewitt.com. We're going abroad for the first time in years. To Spain. So we started using Babbel. And started learning Spanish fast. With Babbel, you can start having conversations in another language in just three weeks. ¿Cómo te llamas? ¿Cómo te llamas? When you learn a language, you want to actually use it. Babbel is designed with that goal in mind. In just three weeks, we're starting to have conversations in Spanish. Gracias, Babbel. Babbel, language for life. Now try Babbel for free at Babbel.com. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle. Unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies candidates with the right skills, sends you great matches, then you can easily invite them to apply. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. See for yourself. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash free to try ZipRecruiter for free. That's ZipRecruiter.com com slash free this is for the men who never settle the ones who believe only quitters and a game and a tie the type of guys who choose the bar with the biggest tvs to overcompensate for theirs at home and the men who use pto to catch afternoon basketball in march with the boys this is the lodge mentality this is twin peaks who wants to settle for a single TV? With more TVs, bigger screens, plus our fabulous scenic views, there's more to watch at Twin Peaks. Guys, did you know your testosterone affects everything in your system, including how you feel and perform every day? Right now, Revive Men's Cells Sacramento will check your testosterone for free. Knowing your T level is the first step in understanding if you have low T. Your testosterone level impacts your energy, libido, sleep, weight, hair loss, mood, and even ED. Maintaining an appropriate T-level can change your whole life. Most men start to see changes in their hormone levels in their 30s. Get your T-levels checked today by local, experienced, and trusted men's health experts. They're in Midtown in the Cal Sutter Medical Building and also offer telemedicine appointments. Plus, with free shipping directly to you, Revive takes the hassle out of treating low T and ED. Schedule your free testosterone test, free exam, and free consultation today. Call Revive Men's Health at 916-365-4566. That's 916-365-4566. Or visit revivemenshealth.com. Live and local. Live and local. This is Sacktown Sports. Keegan Murray. There you go. Young Keegan. Young Keegan. I can't wait to play that sound. But I'm going to keep teasing it. No, you can't. But I'm going to keep teasing it because we're going to play it so much. You got to find it. Once... Once we actually, once can we, we recruit some to. help? Do you think? No, no, no. We're, no, I'm talking about the actual. I'm talking about what happened last night. Gotcha. Not, gotcha. Not from the promo. <laughs> gotcha. No one is going to take a deep dive. I'm going to ask our 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 listeners mm-hmm. anywhere. Twitter, tweet at Chris, tweet at Alan, tweet at the station, in the YouTube chat. If you find the clip that's used in the NBC promo, NBC Sports promo, where Draper goes, Young Keegan! I that- don't believe it! Yeah. That's what I need. Yeah, we need that as a drop. That's what I need. We're looking for it. We can get it, but it would have to. we'd have to record it from a different audio source. I can do that. I just don't know where to go. I don't know where All to- you have to do is fire up one of the games. On YouTube games. TV and then search every commercial for exactly the, yeah so that's my <laughs> issue so it that not yeah. take that long do you want to grind or not no okay <laughs> not at all I like that yeah. well Davion Mitchell was grinding last night and he did his thing the way he's been shooting the three ball has been ridiculous this season he's shooting thirty five point nine percent from three since the new year he's been shooting forty two percent from three in the last seven games oh, he's shooting 61 i thought you three. said he was shooting 65 percent from three i said there's no way no no 61 percent the last seven games there we go there we go okay i thought i thought i was like hold on davion mitchell i know it's been good but it's been i mean but even that's that's insane and it's probably been on like three or four attempts per game mm-hmm. You know, it's good to see Davion. And I, I think you you mentioned it earlier, and uh, it, it really did 
uh, you know, shine a light on the fact that this he he's he's comfortable knowing he's going to like he's solidified in the rotation at yes. this point. Like there was a constant looking over his shoulder to say, oh my gosh, Keon's getting oh Duarte's getting minutes. Oh, you know, is, is Col- you know Colby Jones at the beginning of the season was getting minutes. It's never felt like Davion has had a a clear runway of not having to look over his shoulder and especially not being not forced, but like in the position they're in now where they need his scoring. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in the past it was, you know, Davion, you can spot up in the corner and if the ball comes to you, sure, you can make something happen. But now you're really getting to, to kind of see a bit more of Davion stretching his legs a bit. And I think that's, really important we he just hasn't really gotten with besides the spare opportunity when De'Aaron misses time mm-hmm. hasn't really gotten a lot of opportunity so far in his career to to kind of feel comfortable in any sort of role and it feels like right now you're kind of seeing him get his sea legs a bit and it's really cool to watch now that begs the question because we've all dealt with it in different sports whether you played and Little League, CYO, or whatever it is. You know what I like to say, Chris. If you've never been benched, you're probably still playing a sport right right now. And now it begs the question as to, and this is why Coach, my ground rating Coach of the Year gets paid the big bucks and, and all of that. But now it begs the question, how do you know where that line is to where it's, okay, you're getting spotty opportunities, but... If you got more, maybe you'd play better, but because you're not playing well in those spotty opportunities, I can't put you out there for a longer right. period of time. And and if it wasn't for, let's say, Davion, and he's had chances in the past, more chances in the past. Don't get me wrong. But let's say that Davion just stays on a heater. It's only, it's only seven more games. Sure. Very possible he stays on a heater. Sure. How do you look at that as a front office? Do you look at that as a hot stretch where he's been given more opportunity Mm -hmm. or do you look at and say man maybe if he got more opportunity we could have got more of this all season long I I don't know yeah no I mean it's 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 a tough decision I mean ultimately I think they need to decide what they want from Davion Mitchell when everyone's like I think this isn't really a fair unless this is going to be unless you know you're like hey maybe if we move on from Malik yeah maybe it's not so bleak um sure but I think you you can't really view this stretch as, you know, oh, this might be what Davion's role is going to be, even, you know, add Malik to it, because I think that those two just naturally are going to, you know, I, I Malik is going to do a lot of the things that Davion's going to pick up right now. So, like, having the ball in his hands, running pick and roll, a lot of that stuff is what Malik does when he's out there, and Davion's kind of forced to stand in the corner, and it doesn't really make much sense to you know, Malik's just so much better at that pick and roll. It yeah. doesn't make a lot of sense to run those with Davion out there. Um, so I, I, you know, I, it's kind of tough to, to evaluate in that in with how it is now, You're but just I, taking it day by day. I think you have to, I think that it's, you know, you, you, you've seen a large sample size of Davion. Now he's been around here for three years. Um, you, you, you know, you take it as a development point, but at the end of the day, I think you still have to factor in who you've seen him be and, and, you know, determine it from there. If you've liked what you saw and you feel like he is building towards the guy that you want him to be, you bring him back. But um, if you, you know, if you feel like, you know, maybe he's never going to have the situation perfect here that he's, that he needs to ultimately thrive to become the player he needs to be, then maybe you look more for somebody who is, uh, a role player. Davion's still young in his career. He's trying to blossom. He's trying to maximize his his potential. He might not want to be in the same way we talk about Malik not wanting to be a backup point guard. Davion might look around and say, hey, man, like I want to see where my career can go if I really take a shot on myself. And uh, the Kings might have to, you know, settle for a Monte Morris or somebody who just kind of knows this is what I'm here for. So why don't you kind of explain to everybody because the club exercised this season and next season. Okay. He's a restricted free agent at the end of next season. Okay. Gotcha. So yeah. he will be back. He will be back. It's yeah. just a matter of yes. when the trade talk comes around. Right. right. Hey, at that point, you've been with him so long, you probably have a conversation. Absolutely. Absolutely. And also it's, you know, also going into this offseason. I mean, again, we've we've had conversations, especially recently, about this team getting better. 
uh, and, and making a move in the off season, which we're not fully there yet. So we're not going to dive deep into it, but Davion is one of the young pieces that this team has. And you know, you're, they're not going to, you know, Malik Monk's a free agent. You can't trade him. Uh, Keegan Murray, they've made it clear. He's untouchable. Davion Mitchell, their next young asset who's also on an expiring and you can, you know, you can get a one year tryout with him if you're the team that trades for him and then decide if you're going to sign him again, you know, he might be one of the, the prime and he's a low salary as well. So he's just kind of a, a nice sweetener to any deal. He might be one of the people that the Kings look to move this offseason. Yeah. Well, he's doing himself a lot of favors no, right now. And great. whether it's with Sacramento or with another team moving forward. All yeah. we know is we know we need all of them yeah. buckets right now. Yeah. And he no, has playing great. He man. has been balling. Yeah. And for me, it's not just the three pointers. It's also just he he boogied a couple games ago. He didn't end up taking the shot, but just his handle. Yeah. He just looks confident. Yeah. And you know, he spoke about it as well and just said that the shot feels good. Mm. All the work that he's been putting in. He was my dog. So That's I'm gonna take right. that one. Gotta he was my it. he was my dog in the dog segment. And a couple other people on the SAC chat as well. Shout out to the SAC yes. chat. And it's you need to fill Malik's shoes somehow, some way through different people. And Malik Monk being out is allowing Davion the opportunity. Yep. And he's been taking advantage of it so far. We'll see if that continues. This is from Deuce Mason. Davion Mitchell comes in and buries a corner three. This is from last night. He is shooting 49% on corner threes this season. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's him putting in that work. You know, that's, that's where a lot of guys make their money. That's where PJ Tucker makes mm -hmm. his money. If you can hit that corner three and be that spot up shooter, every single team in the NBA will take that. And then if you like, that's, that is exactly what Davion needs to do. If he's not going to be the primary ball handler on the other side or on that side, he can, he can press on, on defense. And then if he can be a reliable spot up shooter, this man is going to have a long career. And uh, that's, that is exactly what he needs to do is hit wide open corner threes, 49%. It doesn't get better. Than that. And I'll tell you what we saw a lot of, and we'll get more into the, the Knicks preview tomorrow, but we saw a lot of Keon that was in the height of the Keon craze. Yes. And not to say that that's gone away, but even coach Mike Brown has told us, Hey, let's pump the brakes a little bit. He's right. a young guy and, and still getting his feet wet in this league. Davion has a huge opportunity, mm -hmm. right? And it's on a, it's on a big stage. It's national. They'll have Keon on him. Don't yeah. get me wrong on Jalen Brunson, but you get Davion in there. Yep. Going off night on Brunson, who balled out last yeah. game. Some combination of off night and Ellis Island and Davion shooting Ellis like Island this in New York too. In New York, Come shooting on. shooting like this for Davion would would be crazy to do it in another game. Yeah. But if he does it, it bodes well for everybody. Everybody. It bodes everybody. well for everybody. When we return, continuing the conversation, an aggressive Keegan is a good Keegan. And yes, you've waited long enough. We got the call from Draper. Styles and Watkins, Sacktown Sports. What's the missing piece for the 49ers? Which names will they add during free agency? Whether it's in-season or off-season, the coverage never stops. Get the latest 49ers news on Sacktown Sports at SacktownSports.com. Angie's list is now Angie, and we've heard a lot of theories about why. I thought it was an eco-move. Fewer words, less paper. No, it was so you could say it faster. No, it's to be more iconic. Must be a tech thing. But those aren't quite right. It's because now you can compare upfront prices, book a service instantly, and even get your project handled from start to finish. Sounds easy. It is. And it makes us so much more than just a list. Get started at Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I. Or download the app today. eBay Motors is here for the ride. 120,000 miles of night drives, daily commutes, and who knows how many. Are we there yet? Through countless fixes, elbow grease, and a new radiator, you kept your ride alive. With eBay Motors, you have over 122 million parts to keep it running. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit... Hello, YouTube chat. Keep your ride or you guys hear me? alive at ebaymotors.com. It's Should a myth be. to think you don't play golf well enough to get fitted for golf clubs. The professionals at the Hagen Oaks Player Performance Studio yeah, dude, argue that playing the game with golf clubs properly fitted to your body it's and so swing glowy. characteristics is the best way to improve your game and have more fun on the golf course. Oh, hold on. You, you guys are getting that. The fitters, all the major brands of equipment and cutting edge yeah, technology yeah, featuring track man, the indoor out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, hey, hey, everybody. Hey, Simone. What's up? Uh, 
I'm wondering what the poll should be today. It seems like everyone's happy with the Kings again. It's funny how that is. It's just that, you know, it's, a, it's an hour by hour basis with these guys, with these guys being the Kings. I need a poll idea. I need to, to I almost said milk you guys for ideas, but I don't think I can say that. It doesn't sound good. Let's see. Uh, which bench player? Yeah, that's a pretty good. I, Aaron, I think that's probably what we're gonna go with. I like that idea. Um, so I gotta put. How much time do I have? Two minutes. All right. Which bench player will? Oops. Will be the most important for the Kings going forward. Uh. Oh man, <laughs> makes it just, yeah. I mean, I wasn't that mad, but it's it's fine. Da okay, Davion, Len, Lyles. Sorry, Chris. I'm in the YouTube chat. I'm talking to them, so I'm not talking to myself. What the fuck are you doing? You're not on the phone with somebody? No, I'm on Streamyard in the YouTube chat. I'm setting up a poll and I'm asking them. I'm on YouTube. Yeah, to the YouTube chat. I'm on the YouTube. Like you're, but you're just typing. Right? You're not talking, talking. Right? I am talking, talking, yeah. So they can hear me? Now they can, yeah. Why? That's what I was trying to say, because I'm trying to get a poll set up, so I'm asking for help in the break instead of instead of running commercials. <laughs> um, on. All right. When... Um, Trey Lyles and Sasha. I don't know if I want to put Sasha on there. Um, for Emmy, who I mean, when I was definitely not JaVale. Uh, we're coming back. I'll just okay. I'll just add Sasha. Start pull. Okay, thanks guys. I'm gonna hop out. The sales pitch. Calculate your solar savings at yourpowersavings.com. Sports. Check us out on YouTube. Search Sacktown Sports and subscribe. Be sure to join us, and, and I'll put it to you like this. You're not going to want to miss us at Fieldhouse American Sports oh, Pub. Yeah. Monday, I may or may not bring the fam. I might bring no the fam. Way. I might bring the fam. Wow. So if you, if you want to kick it with Chris and I, yes. a couple other people from Sacktown Sports That's will right. be there. Brendan was out there. Chris is signing autographs. That's Maybe you can convince me. I will do pictures. Alan will definitely do pictures and definitely do autographs. I will definitely do both. <laughs> this is my dream. <laughs> Nate, Nate, are you gonna are you gonna be there? Probably not. Nate's right. going to be there. There's 50 things going on in here. I don't even I know, know what you I'm just like, asked. I, Fieldhouse sorry, American Sports Pub. Fault, I'll man. be there. I'll Monday, be there. Monday, we're going to have a good time. Chris Verlaude will be there. Yeah, Carmichael right. Dave will be there. That's right. That's a confirmed. lot of people will be there. Confirmed. Jason Ross will be there This is this Monday? Well. That's no, right. Uh, well, yes, this coming, this coming Monday. Monday. Joe Jaros, our guy, will yes, be there be as there. well. So you don't want to miss it. We're looking at – and I would tell you, I was looking at the menu. So, Chris, yeah. they had something, and it was very similar – to what we were discussing not really? too long ago oh, that's right. for KFC, that's right. and they have essentially a, a, a chitza. Yeah, we were talking about the chitza the other day from KFC, which is like, uh, it's a chicken slab, but it's got 
cheese and pepperoni on top yes, of it, essentially. Yes, and I'm, I'm, I'm pulling it up right now. A pepperoni chicken sandwich. Grilled chicken okay. breast. Okay. Pepperoni, melted provolone, cheese mayo, lettuce, and fire-roasted <laughs> peppers on a French baguette. So it's a cheetah sandwich, so essentially. I'm assuming <laughs> that they did it first. Right. You don't just fire wow. something up. We're going to the original well, cheetah. If spot? you want the original cheetah, also crazy. known as the pepperoni chicken sandwich, <laughs> come check us out. But I'm looking here at this menu, guys. It looks great. The yeah, prices look wings. great. Mac and cheese with, with some bacon on it. Throw some bacon on that. Chili cheese fries, Gilroy <laughs> garlic fries. You don't want to miss it. Chris and I will yes. be there yes. taking pictures. If you want to know what a true Zant looks like. <laughs> And really know and really know what we look like in real time. Check us out on yeah. Monday. There's also going to be basketball on. too. There also will be, but we <laughs> don't know. Kids. We don't know as don't the know final who. four. And by the way, did you say D DJ Burns shut down at Applebee's? Did you see that? I did see that. Yeah. So yeah. that's going to be, that's going to be good stuff. And I know Chris, you're looking forward to it as well. Oh yeah. No, we were there. Me and uh, me and Whitey were out there. Uh, what was that on Saturday? Uh, and it was it was a great time, you know. Yeah, Brendan Nunez showed up. We uh, we just you got Brendan to show yeah, up. I got Brendan to show up. Well, I hear, I hear Brendan, that's tough these days. Well, yeah, well, it is it is tough these days. I've definitely <laughs> heard that. But you know who has been tough Who's these that? days? That has been Davion Mitchell. Ooh. And this is Davion on how they are embracing the physicality. I think we're just embracing the physicality. Um, I think we love it. Um, I mean, we helping helping each other, one another. Um, being there for each other, taking charges. Um, I mean, Keon had six fouls tonight, so he's being physical. I mean, it was a lot of, a lot of ticky tack fouls. But I, mean, we're, I think we're being physical. Well, we're just getting ready for the playoffs. This is also Davion talking about how he's been feeling offensively and how he's been, I guess, feeling good right now. Uh, Malik was a key piece in our offense, um, scoring the ball, facilitating. Uh, I mean, I just kind of listen to the coaches and take what the defense give me. Um, they kind of tell me to just be aggressive. Uh, you got to be more aggressive. I mean, those shots are gone. Those points are gone. So be, be more aggressive throughout the game. And he certainly has been aggressive, Chris, and it has been to a huge positive for the Kings. As we get into Keegan Murray, and don't worry, it's coming. As we get into Keegan Murray taking 18 field goals, and he, he has never done that before yeah. in back-to-back -back games until now. That's Keegan knowing the moment, and that's mm -hmm. Keegan understanding. And and dare I say, Chris, I mean, I, I'm, t I'm talking about baby Styles here when, you know, she's almost walking. She's taking mm -hmm. about two to three steps. I think I showed you the video. Mm -hmm. She's starting to talk a little bit, and you just see, you just see them growing. You mm -hmm. just see them growing. And Keegan Murray has been growing as well, and it's been beautiful to watch. Yeah, I mean it, it's been uh, it's been fantastic to watch all season, and I think the big thing from from Keegan's game yesterday is you know it, it's another game where it's not about his threes. He only hit two threes yesterday. It was a lot of the uh, you know you had him taking a couple of those those almost patent pending at this point those those step back jumpers mm -hmm. uh, from mid range and like then Kemba Walker like, talking about March Madness. <laughs> I'm not gonna go that far. The Kemba special. I'm not gonna go that far, but he he is definitely uh, he's working on it. He'll get there one day. Uh, and then you see him attacking the rim too. Like he had two really big finishes. Obviously the the huge one over Zubac, which brought the house down and and made Draper almost fall out of his seat. It sounded like. Uh, you know, those those are the moments that get me the most excited about Keegan. Of course, him taking the the 18 shot attempts is fantastic. Him having, uh, you know, close to 20 points in these games. That's fantastic. But to me, it's the the diversity of it all. It's the fact that he's getting some shots at the rim, getting some shots in the mid range mm -hmm. and continuing to attack from beyond the perimeter. And Keegan talked about it the other day. Whitey asked him, and and you know he we can't figure out if Keegan was serious or not. But it does seem like he's working on his playmaking. Yesterday he had a nice little dump off to Sabonis. That was nice. Uh, that that Sabonis definitely appreciated. Kind of gave him some love for. Uh, I think that you're just seeing everything start to to click here with Keegan at the end of the season. And you know it might have been forced on him a bit because of the situation, but. You know, that is one of the the very, very few positives about the Kings being so injured right now is I don't know if Keegan would do this if he wasn't 
this if the situation hadn't called for it. Well, I don't know yeah. if he would naturally just recognize this moment and say, I need to step up. I think he would have had I think he had to have been told, hey man, it's not an option anymore. You have to do this. Well, there's the Davion piece of this where he wasn't given the opportunities, right? Yeah. There's the Keegan part of it, and and now he is. There's a Keegan part of this to where maybe subconsciously or or just how he's wired without being forced to do this, thinking, okay, well, Malik's shots are gone, and now Kevin Herter's shots are gone. It's got to come from right. somewhere. If he wasn't put in this position, I have no clue if we would have got here yeah. this season. And and if you really want to put a positive spin on it, if ultimately you didn't think the Kings were going to end in a parade anyway, not to say we don't want – obviously we wish that Malik was out there. But if this, if you think it was going to end maybe in a deeper playoff run but not in a championship, then is it really so bad to put Keegan in a situation where he's being forced – to maybe be a little bit uncomfortable yeah. on the offensive end and take more shots than he's used to taking and being forced that way. Are you saying they're making the uncomfortable comfortable? They're definitely making the <laughs> uncomfortable comfortable, and that is exactly, I think, the 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 little straws you can grasp yeah. in a situation where, hey, who knows, man, maybe they lose to the Knicks and, yeah. and this thing goes south and they, they drop. At least you can say, well – when we look at the checklist, what did we get That's right. out of out of this season? Here's Mike Brown on on Keegan, and he just had a lot to kind of go over, and here he is. Keegan, you know, like I said, last year Keegan was primarily a catch-and-shoot three-point shooter, and this year he's shown the ability uh, to defend at a high level, to rebound, uh, at a high level um, and to score from all three levels. And you're right, you know, last year when, when we when we talked to him about uh, um, going to the rim, he didn't need to fade and shoot a running hook. Or he, he's so strong. He's a big man. And uh, he can play with some force. And uh, it's starting to show. And, again, we need that with, with, with uh, Malik and Kevin out. Um, we need him to step up and to score from all three levels and do it with some force because, um, you know, anytime he goes to the rim, he's a capable finisher while, uh, uh, while getting fouled. You know, the, his next step now, you know, everybody's jumping at every – all he's got to do is look at the rim and guys are flying when he drives he looks at the rim guys are flying and now he's got to be able to have some gamesmanship within his game and if he gets a guy up in the air go right to his body to draw that foul because you got the guy out and finish at the same time he still kind of pump fakes and steps through and lets the defense off the hook uh but I, he's definitely heading in the right direction he's made a ton of progress and it is much needed by our team right now all right, without further ado, let's get it going, Nate. We won't make the people wait <laughs> any longer. And it's really just me. I think I might it's be the just... most excited from this. I was just excited to see Malik's reaction, though. But here it is, Draper's call of Keegan Murray's Young crazy Keegan. dunk last night. Oh, it's sloppy right now. I love that. He just got a body. But the, what gets me is the sloppy. It's sloppy now. Well, because oh! it, you know, there was a lot. And then he, he gets it. And then, oh! I just love how he didn't finish I know, the words. Yeah. Just thought it went from Murray to O. Oh. That's oh, how it had to go. That was, was exciting. That's I don't, how it had to go. I mean, that was outstanding. We will run that back better. when we return. Continuing the conversation. And De'Aaron Fox, his steals. Swiper, ever since Chris had something to say about his nickname, <laughs> he's gotten a steal, a and I think every game after that. Also, putting the West into perspective and what has to be done to stay out of the play-in. Styles and Watkins, Sackdown Sports. Trying to find out where to catch your favorite team's games? Are you a fan of the Kings, Niners, and the NFL? Well, Sackdown Sports has you covered. Touchdown! Francisco! It's all on his shoulders. Fox rocks. He fires for the win. He's got the triple 
Bowl. Catch all your Kings, Niners, and NFL games all year long on Sacktown Sports and SacktownSports.com. I love this time of year when the azaleas begin to bloom and the singing birds' sweet dawn chorus remind us that blue skies and sunshine are at hand. Hi, this is Frank LaRosa with a word about Naturewood Home Furnishings. In sports, the definition for the word master is one who's achieved a high degree of skill, and that will be on display in the highly anticipated golf tournament. In the furniture business, a master is a highly skilled craftsman, an artist even, whose work is coveted by those who appreciate design, quality, and durability. John Keyes was the mastermind of Naturewood Home Furnishings. He knew that you wanted your home to reflect your personal style, whether that was a plain coffee table or a masterpiece for you to enjoy forever. That's why when you walk into Naturewood Home Furnishings, you'll find the largest and best selection of the highest quality home furnishings in Northern California. Masterful. Naturewood Home Furnishings, off Highway 50 at Hazel. Look for the water wheel. Progressive asks, what do a slow Friday night Bored teenage boys. I'm bored. A pack of fireworks. <laughs> this is going to be awesome. <laughs> and a teetering branch suspended over your car have in common. Look out! <laughs> they can quickly wreak havoc on your slow Friday night. Uh-oh. Bundle your home and auto with Progressive for great savings and round-the-clock protection. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers. Not available in all states or situations. eBay Motors is here for the ride. <laughs> 120,000 miles of night drives, daily commutes, and who knows how many. Are we there yet? Through countless fixes, elbow grease, and a new radiator, you kept your ride alive. With eBay Motors, you have over 122 million parts to keep it running. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, they'll be the perfect fit every time. Plus, at these prices, well, we're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. This statement has not been evaluated by the FDA. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. When it comes to my lifestyle and diet, I don't always make the smartest choices. Touchdown! Woo! Hey, how about another round and some more chips? But when it comes to taking care of my liver, I do make one very smart choice. Active liver tablets from New Nordic. I used to have real issues with my liver, and at my last checkup, my doc was concerned about my numbers. But since adding a once-a-day active liver tablet, my gut's better, I feel great, and my doctor's happy. I ask a lot of my liver, so the least I can do to say thanks is a daily dose of active liver. Active liver is one of many award-winning health products from New Nordic, the number one supplier of dietary supplements in Scandinavia. Purchase at Amazon.com or for a volume discount, visit NewNordicUSA.com. Available as a tablet or delicious sugar-free gummy. Protect and help your liver the easy and effective way with active liver at Amazon or NewNordicUSA.com. Welcome to a brighter future with Aztec Solar, serving Sacramento since 1980. Everyone knows that solar saves money. How much? The answer is a few clicks away. Visit yourpowersavings.com. It's fast, easy, and reliable, giving you instant insight into your potential savings. I used to pay $400 a month to the power company, and that $400 a month added up to $48,000 over the past 10 years. That all changed when I switched to solar with Aztec Solar. Now it's your turn to stop overpaying for electricity. Calculate your solar savings right now at yourpowersavings.com. And Aztec Solar will email or text you how much you'll save every month. Plus, we've got an exclusive offer for you. Get your solar electrical system for just $9,995 cash price after incentives. Don't wait. This deal won't last forever. Visit yourpowersavings.com today and take the first step towards energy independence with Aztec Solar. Made of Chevy saves you 8000 off MSRP on every new Silverado LT and RST half-ton diesel in stock after rebates. A Made of Chevy exclusive. See all the truck season savings at madeofchevy.com. Together, let's drive. See dealer for details. And store 3024. From the power business technology Toshiba Studios. KHTKAM Sacramento. KYMX HD2 Sacramento. Sacramento's official home for the San Francisco Cisco 49ers. Touchdown! San Fred Cisco! Settown Sports. Oh, oh got to plug up. It's sloppy right now.
<laughs> Run that back, Nate. Run it back. Is Draper a snitch? And crank it. it. <laughs> he said, he said, call 911. Why would you call 911 on oh your guy gosh. Keegan? Nate, don't ruin this. <laughs> Run it back. It's sloppy right now. Wow. How about that? That's outstanding. That's incredible. Outstanding, Mr. Draper. Styles and Watkins taking you up to 2 p.m. And can Keegan Murray do more of that? Continue to do that. And by the way, Trey Lyles did his best Malik Monk impression on that Duncan. Wasn't thoroughly impressed. It's <laughs> it, they're they're never gonna be impressed at this point. And I just say. Hey, I know we say it, Chris, every every now and then, most connected team I've ever been that's a part right. of. That's, that's, right. that's from the words of the reigning coach of the year, and they definitely have the vibes right going right now. From the Kings, De'Aaron Fox recorded a steal, has now recorded a steal in 21 consecutive games, tying Chris's favorite player, Donovan Mitchell, for the <laughs> third longest steal streak in the NBA this season. Oh, well, that tells me that it's really not that impressive of a number then. If Donovan's all right, enough with that. Swipe a gonna swipe. <laughs> Do we talk enough about De'Aaron Fox's ability to kind of flip the game sometimes yeah. and and not even let these guys get a shot up? And a lot of times those will lead yeah. to easy points on the other end. Yeah, probably not. I mean, we talked a lot about, you know, when Keon came onto the scene and mm -hmm. was getting five steals and five blocks in games. But, you know, yeah, we haven't really mentioned much about how De'Aaron has just been that constant ball pressure guy. And, and he's really taken a leap this year. He's taken the defensive end of the floor a lot more seriously. And, uh, you know, you kind of see how it's how, especially now when you have Davion, Keon and uh, De'Aaron all on the floor at the same time, that's really tough for, for opposing ball handlers to deal with. I mean, those are three guys who you don't want any of those guys crowding your space. And uh, with the speed that De'Aaron's able to provide, we forget sometimes he's six, four, like he is a really, really big dude. The ability for him to just kind of swarm smaller point guards. It, it really does go understated, I think, a lot. And uh, it'll be interesting to see just kind of, you know, as he gets older and older and, and his body uh, gets stronger, how he uses his strength on top of his speed to really just swarm defenders. Keon Ellis, I'm not I'm not going to say the jury is still out. We, we think he's going to be a pretty good player. Yeah. We're not sure what that level is, but he's had a great, great season so far. Davion Mitchell, we just talked about how he's starting to ball out. Yeah. The, the Kings have exercised an option. What happens there next season if they have Malik, if they don't have Malik? You got Keegan Murray as well. Mm -hmm. You talk about this team moving forward defensively, what they've maybe figured out. And the one guy that we haven't talked about, we talk about Keegan. We talk about Davion. We talk about Keon. We don't talk about De'Aaron Fox as much as we probably should. Right. And Mike Brown at the beginning of the season, when when – De'Aaron Fox was doing his thing, and when he was putting up 30 a night, and when he was, there was no Keon Ellis, so a lot of times he was locking up the other team's yeah. best guard. This is a team that can really, okay, so now without Malik, without Kevin Herter, you're, you're forced to be more of a defensive team. Mm -hmm. Going into next season, not to look too far ahead, you have an opportunity to, to be, dare I say, top 10 in both categories. I mean, Maybe, I think it's yeah. possible. Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's the direction that hopefully I think, I think Mike Brown would definitely hope mm -hmm. that, right? Like, I think he would say, you know, we tried to bring in a lot of offensive weapons this off season. Wasn't, wasn't really the move. You know, I think that if, if they bring in, you know, I think JTA, his little stint that yeah. he had here in Sacramento, the fact that Mike Brown instantly was like, I'm playing this guy. I don't care. I'm playing him in big moments. I'm putting him on other teams, best uh, offensive players. I think those are the kind of guys that the Kings are going to want to get this offseason. And it wouldn't surprise me if, yeah, just like you're saying, the Kings lean more towards the defensive end because I, I just think that that's where you you have the edge in today's NBA. Everybody is good at offense in today's NBA. Even the worst team in the NBA, a lot of the times the worst teams in the NBA will just go hyper offense. But it's the teams that actually play defense are the ones that separate themselves and uh, if the Kings can become one of those teams, top 10 in defense, 
that's how you realistically get in the in the conversation of oh maybe they can be the conference maybe they can make a conference championship who knows maybe if the matchups go their way they can make it out of the west but they're not going to do that until they have a bit more of the defensive personnel this is this is fine that they're playing this level of defense but we've talked about it before earlier in the season even now it feels like they're kind of maxing out their defensive potential they need to get a, a bit more length and size and guys who just naturally are good defenders in here to take it to that next, next level. 916-339-1140, if you want to be a part of the conversation. I can't believe we haven't brought this player's name up yet. I think we did during Frank Facts, but nothing after that because Alex Len, man, three blocks, he was a plus 18, four points, he was two for two. Chris, I looked at the box score yeah. and I saw it said 12 minutes and I rubbed my eyes because <laughs> it felt like he played at least 20. His yeah. impact was incredible. Yeah, no, I mean, it's it's ridiculous. He, he barely plays any minutes like he, he, and he really doesn't need to play more with how Sabonis plays, but mm -hmm. it's it's how well he plays in that concentrated amount of time. I looked it up on the post game yesterday. If you filter out players who have played 35, at least 35 games this season, which is about half the games, um, Alex Len is number one in defensive rating, meaning when he's on the floor, the Kings have the best defensive rating of any other lineup in the NBA. And I think that's because Alex is just such a big presence down there. And he's so athletic, like he can move. He's not just like a, a Boban where he's huge and is plotting in the yeah. middle of the lane. He can move. You saw him yesterday make it tough on James Harden. They blitzed James Harden uh, and, and he got that tip that led to that big deer and Fox dunk. He's just really, really perfect for what these guys are are looking for, and that's why you know I was, and I think you were shared the frustration of, I don't know why we had to see Javale McGee for so long. I think Alex has provided this all year, and you know I'm just glad that at this point in the season we, you know, we're we're getting only Alex Len, and it's it's undeniable to to see the impact that Alex has. Do you think maybe part of it was, and I know you you had brought up their history on the Warriors together, sure. JaVale and Mike Brown. Do you think part of it was Mike Brown feeling like JaVale was a different player than he actually currently is? I think so. And it just took I a little bit tough. for him to just be honest with yeah. himself and say, all right, he's not, he's not there because right. he had just, he had more recently seen right. Alex Len. No. Yeah, exactly. He, he had Alex Len on his team last year. I'm trying to see. I, I don't even know how old JaVel is at this point. I think he's 36. He's up there. He's 36, he's 36 yeah. right now. So, yeah, I mean, there's a really good chance that, you know, when when they brought in JaVel and let's not forget, you know, when the Kings signed JaVel this offseason, they they were like they before they signed JaVel. Let's go there. The Kings had signed Nerlens Noel and Scalabissier, and they still had Namias Kata on their roster. And people and Alex Len as well. And it was okay, they're just gonna go center by committee, or they're gonna go into training camp and say, we're gonna have a true training camp battle the same way, you know, NFL teams always have their quarterback battles. We're just gonna have these guys fight it out for the backup center. JaVale McGee gets cut by Dallas. The Kings pick him up almost immediately and then cut Nerlens Noel. Uh Scalabissier never does anything with the Kings. Namias Keda gets cut. And it becomes a okay. Clearly, the runway is cleared for for Javale to uh, to have that spot. So I say all that to say I definitely think the plan was always oh Javale's here. I've seen what he can do for a team. Uh -huh. He's going to be our backup center. We don't need to have this competition. We will keep Alex because we know what we have in Alex. But if Javale is the guy that he was for us, I don't know three years ago, uh -huh. three years previous for from Golden State. That's really the guy that we're looking for. And then to your point, I think Mike Brown kind of had to learn the hard way. And I'd, I'd be surprised if he didn't see it during practice. But um, he had to learn that, you know, JaVale just can't provide necessarily what he used to provide. The, the good doesn't necessarily outweigh all of the turnovers and head scratching plays that JaVale has sometimes. If you look at Alex Len and what you just said as far as his defensive rating compared to JaVale McGee, what is it do you think? the Kings felt like was missing with Alex Len. You know, I really don't, I guess just the, the straight vertical, like, you know, when you think of JaVale, you think of a guy who can, you know, touch the top of the backboard, yeah, which he still can, he still can. Exactly. I think that they just think Alex isn't naturally a rim protector. And I mm -hmm. think they were looking for rim protection. But the thing about Alex is he's just, 
he like you can't forget Alex Len was the fourth pick in the draft. Like mm-hmm. there was a time where people saw his height and saw his mobility and were like, if this turns into something, this could be Chris Stapsworth. I don't know what mm-hmm. the comp at that time would have been, but just something that you don't see in the NBA. And he still has traits of that. Like, you know, yeah, he hasn't lived up to that fourth pick in the draft, but he still is an incredible athlete. And he, we saw yesterday, he gets three blocks and a half. He's able to rim protect. It's just, it doesn't look flashy. He's not, again, he's not jumping to the top of the backboard and swatting things into the eighth row. He's just a really big body who has really good timing on, on blocks. And, you know, he's, he's done a great job of keeping himself in really good shape and, uh, and staying pretty springy. Yeah. You, you said last season you talked about how he got called on later in the season, yeah. and we talk about it was da- around this time. Yeah, we talk we talk about Davion. You know, ain't gotta ain't gotta get ready if you stay ready. We've talked about Keon, but Alex Len is a guy who, okay, we we don't we don't talk about him as much no. for whatever reason. And if and if he can continue to add and bring what he's been bringing yeah. to a defense that's continuing to live and breathe and grow like a plant almost. Yeah. I mean, it's good timing. And again, I'm not going to sit here and we're going to do it right right here, pocket watch when we return. I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, oh, my goodness, the Kings are the the scary team and 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 they could fully make some noise as in get to the finals. I know people keep talking about the Lakers going to the Western Conference finals last season. It's not the same. Talking I'm about, so sick of hearing that. Talking too, about I'm the sorry. heat. And we can talk about that, too. Yeah. I, I'd, I'd enjoy that for yeah. sure, because yeah. it's every time every now. Every time. And. You have a team in the Lakers, and yeah, getting to the Western Conference Finals would be great. Yeah, but I got some numbers here as to why the Kings are in this position, and it just speaks to how ridiculous right. the West is. In the East, they got a bunch of choke artists in the East. Can we be honest about that? <laughs> yeah. The East is a little bit different it's soft. than the yeah, West. They, when we return, absolutely. pocket watching what the Kings have to do or can do to stay out of the play. In Styles and Watkins, Sackdown Sports. Our first year as the radio home of the San Francisco 49ers is one we will never forget. Going deep down the sideline for are you? He's got it, and he's gone. Ten, five, touchdown! San Francisco, are you? Are you? Are you? Is on fire! Congratulations to the 49ers on a terrific year. And thank you for so many wonderful memories. I'm Ken Korak with our first Green and Gold Report for 2024. Brought to you by Xfinity 10G, the network made for streaming. Well, for the A's to turn around their fortunes this year, they'll have to play better defense than they've shown early in the season. Now, bright spots on the mound. Paul Blackburn went seven in the last game of the Cleveland series. Three hits and no runs. And then Kyle Muller in the first game against the Red Sox comes out of the bullpen. Five and a third, one hit, and six strikeouts. Want more speed? Well, Xfinity just increased their internet speeds, and they're faster than ever. It's time to get more out of your internet with faster speeds from Xfinity. Now through June 21st, get 150 megabit Xfinity internet for only $19.99 a month for 12 months with one-year contract. That's double the speed for the same great price. Click, call, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay with store bank account. Restrictions apply. Equipment, taxes, and other charges extra. After promo, regular rates apply. Actual speeds vary. Join Alan Styles, Chris Watkins, and the Sacktown Sports Street Team on Monday, April 8th from 5 to 7 p.m. at Fieldhouse American Sports Pub for some basketball madness and their mouth-watering full menu. 1310 Fulton Avenue. See you there. Post game last night in an interview, he said, don't focus on your points, rebounds. None of that matters. Just focus on your plus or minus, whether it's three minutes, five minutes, whatever it is, make sure your plus minus is always positive. That's what he had to say, Chris. And last night, Alex Len was a plus 18. That's right. A game high plus 18. A game high plus 18. That is just outstanding. And 
like you, you said, you, you said literally he started playing more at this number game last season. Yes. I just looked at the game logs here. And if you look at last season, Alex Len had only played in consecutive games. One, two, three times, four times, uh, the entire season he had played, uh, let's see. He played in game 70 for four minutes against Washington uh, in game 70 again. And that was March 18th. And then randomly on March 27th, Alex Len is inserted for seven minutes in a loss to Minnesota. And then that game that the Kings clinched their playoff spot in Portland, they won by 40. Alex Len played 15 minutes out of nowhere and then played every single game the rest of the season, played at least 12 minutes in the remainder of the season. Game 76 on, he played uh, He played at least 12 minutes. Yesterday was game 75. So actually, yes, technically, uh, it would be as if, and I was just telling you during the break, it would pretty much be like if Kessler Edwards just randomly got inserted against the Knicks and he ended up, as part of the rotation and looking at it, Alex Len played pretty much all. He played 12 minutes in game one or 13 minutes in game one, eight minutes in game two, seven minutes in game three, 10 in game four, 11 in game five, and then didn't really play in game six and seven. So it, I, I don't remember seeing anything like that where you really don't play a guy at all, all season long. And then game 76 on you play him and he's part of your playoff rotation. That's right. just, that's, that's insane. Uh, but that's, that's where Alex found himself last year. It doesn't, it doesn't typically happen that way. And really in the same realm as pocket watching, you know, 82 games. And obviously it's our job. We're sitting here. We watch the games, we go to the games and we talk about the games, right? From a fan perspective, there have been some issues with the 82 games and Adam Silver trying to get people to pay attention more and, and and focus in before Christmas and focus in before February. And that's why the in-season tournament got brought up. But as we talk so much about, Oh, well, the heat got to the, got to the finals out of the plan and the, Lakers got to the Western Conference Finals out right. of the plane and lost to the eventual champion. I don't really hear anyone mentioning whether or not that's good for basketball as far as making the regular season even Less more right. insignificant. Right. Yeah. No, it's a uh, it's a really good point, and it's something that I think uh, the league tried to gloss over that point. They were just like, look how amazing – look at the parody. Just right. focus on the parody. And Don't worry it, about it the is fact great. that the precedent that it might set for, uh, you know, seating might not matter. Right. If – if if and everybody is – could be, the, could be yeah. the, the Kings. If the Kings, the Warriors, the Lakers, if any of them get to the finals, and it's different, and we'll explain why because of the West, but – Specifically in the East, I mean, you could basically just coast. That's essentially that's what LeBron's been doing. Yeah. I, I think the the Warriors just aren't very good, but the <laughs> Lakers they've had some injuries. I yeah. mean, Gabe Vincent did he even ever play for I them? Under eight games. Van, Vanderbilt is there to to hang out with LeBron, but he's yes. never actually on the court. Good fits. And and now, let's say they pull it off again. Highly unlikely. Let's sure. say they do. If I'm a Laker That's fan or if I'm – yeah, that would be bad, very bad for the Kings. <laughs> if, if I'm a Laker fan or whoever, why am I going to pay attention? Right. No. I mean, it's a, it's a really fair point If it's because it, it's almost more frustrating that way too because you see them go to another level in the playoffs and you're like, well, where was this all right? right? Where was it when I – to your point, when I bought tickets yeah. to go see the Lakers play the Pelicans yep. and I was really excited – but then, you know, yeah, LeBron didn't play defense for the entire second half, and so it wasn't a very fun night. But all of a sudden, now in the playoffs, just because these games are of heightened importance, and Lord knows, you know, I'm you know, I'm just a blue-collar person. I can't afford a playoff ticket, uh -uh. especially not to a Laker playoff ticket. I, I, get, I don't get to see my team actually perform yeah. how they should perform because, because 
you determine that the regular season doesn't matter. Like that's, that's not a very good sign to your fans. Definitely. I mean, yeah, like I said, the league will point at parody, parody, parody. It's great that, you know, everybody, it's like March madness. You get into the tournament and then anything can happen. You don't give up on a season just because you're an eight seed doesn't mean things are over. It all sounds fine and dandy, but it ultimately does pretty much discredit your regular season as having of being really important for anything besides home court advantage. Right. And it really just comes down to how much they care or do they believe that whatever they're losing from just the regular season and the viewership not being maybe where they would hope it to be. Are you getting that back during the play-ins when it's LeBron and Steph Maybe sometimes, but I don't know if you're making all that back in the play-ins. Yeah, no, I I definitely don't think so. I I feel like, uh, you know, in, you know, I I don't know if we want to do the conversation, but I just, I don't think that ultimately the play, like getting out of the play-in and then making a deep run. I don't think that that's something that everybody can plan for. You know, Mm -hmm. I think that that's something that can be a talking point. Sure. But ultimately to use that one example that feels like an outlier situation. Yes, it happened twice in one year and you can say, oh, it's a sign of a shifting of times, but I just don't, I think that those two were very, two very specific situations and I definitely don't think that the Kings would qualify to be a potential Laker or Miami Heat type run. And everybody was talking about how the West was down last season. That's right, yeah. And 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 so the Lakers took advantage of the down West, right? Exactly. And now that the West is back up, you won't be able to take advantage of it like that. You would hope. I think if you're I think if you're Adam Silver, you never want your big brands to lose, but you probably don't you Not would take this case. I mean you in would, this case you'll take it. You would take it because you don't know how much longer you have LeBron and sure, Steph. Sure. But if but enter another star yeah. who's not going to be gone in, right. in the next couple of years here who just continues to just kick it. If Luca, yeah, if Luca just continues to just kick it six seed and, and play in, it's going to get to a point where he says, all right, this is cool and all, but it would be really nice for you to just play like this throughout the duration of the season, sure. because then viewership would be up throughout the season. Sure. But if I'm Luca, I don't have to, yeah. if I'm getting the Western conference finals from the play in, I really don't have to. Yeah, no, I mean, the only downside of playing in the play-in is you are putting yourself at risk of being eliminated completely. Yes. And that's, that's obviously something you want to avoid, but man, as long as you can clinch up that top six seed, I think ultimately you don't really have to worry about it. And that's why I'm so surprised. I guess Denver's a kind of unique situation because they have such a massive home court advantage, Mm -hmm. especially come playoff time to have to go to that elevation in a game seven is an impossible task really. But I'm surprised that, that a team like Denver would care so much about getting the one seed because you would think they're going to say much like what we just outlined. Look, you got to play us anyway. We know that we're championship worthy. Mm -hmm. Why does it matter if we're the four seed or the three seed or the six seed? Because if you got to, why, as a matter of fact, why, you know, I don't know. Yeah. I I just don't know why Denver would want to fight for a seed under regular circumstances. If Denver, if it's not Denver, if it's Oklahoma city Mm -hmm. and Oklahoma city gets a championship and, and you know, whatever, two, three years down the line, they've got an established championship core why are they going to care about seeding? It doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, it feels like home, and especially, again, as just general home court advantage feels like it matters less and less. I mean, again, Denver's a kind of unique situation, but for the most part, you know, I think that there's they've shown, especially, I mean, you could speak to it more in baseball. I know last yeah. year there was crazy runs of even in the playoffs, home and road doesn't really matter. Feels like as that shrinks and shrinks, seeding will also matter a whole lot less just get in just get in and get in healthy that's the important thing coming up next pocket watching styles and watkins sackdown sports did you miss any part of our live local shows don't worry you never have to miss them again check out sackdownsports.com and search our podcast page and play our shows when you want the carmichael dave show with jason ross styles and watkins and the drive guys plus other podcasts like return of the empire Return of the Roar, the Stingers Up podcast, and Golf to Go with Frank LaRosa. They're all available right now on SacktownSports.com. I'm Craig Ashton of the Injury Law Firm of Ashton and Price. Whether you've been injured on a bicycle, as a pedestrian, in a slip and fall, auto, Uber, Lyft, or big rig accident, you need Ashton and Price in your corner. 
When you call Ashton and Price, there's no chatbot telling you to hit three for accounting. You're greeted by a real live person who will immediately transfer you to an experienced attorney. The consultation's free, and there's never a fee until you win. Remember, for the best advice, don't think twice. Call Ashton and Price. Country in the Park is back May 17th and 18th at Cal Expo with Brantley Gilbert, Dustin Lynch, Jay Cohen, Walker Hayes, and more. Tickets start at just 46 bucks. Country in the Park, May 17th and 18th at Cal Expo. For more information, visit CITPFest.com. Brought to you by Fiddy and Fiber, Dawson Oil Company, and Good Guys Heating and Cooling. Are you tired of your tee shots ending up in the adjoining fairway while the rest of your foursome is hitting it down the middle? Well, experts will tell you that being properly fitted for golf clubs will help you strike your drive center cut. The Hagen Oaks Player Performance Studio and its team of trained PGA professionals are ready to help you get rid of your banana balls and duck hooks. Hagen Oaks Indoor-Outdoor Player Performance Studio fittings are available seven days a week. Make yours today by calling 916-808-2531. That's 808-2531. This is Kenny and Jerry from Bell Brothers Plumbing, Heating, and Air. Everyone knows that a group of fish is called a school, but did you know a group of giraffes is called a tower? Or how about a murder of crows, a quiver of cobras, a shadow of jaguars, a shiver of sharks, or a zeal of zebras? Wild, huh? So what do you call a group of Bell Brothers plumbers? They don't fit into any of the traditional plumber stereotypes. They're clean and well-dressed. They're on time and courteous. They're well-trained and friendly. They're exactly the kind of people you'd be comfortable and confident to invite into your home. That's why we proudly call them our family of plumbers. If you need a drain cleared or any other plumbing service, we'll send one of the family right over to help you out. Call Bell Brothers at 916-444-1234, or you can find us online at thenosurpriseguys.com. The No Surprise Guys, Bell Brothers. Dr. Ken Howachek and kinesiologist Kelsey Graham discuss the Good Feet Store. The foot has a lot of detail. It has a lot of complexity. There's a lot that can go wrong. A lot of problems start in the foot and end up elsewhere. Knee pain, hip pain, back pain. When aligning the feet properly, we can see relief elsewhere. And that's the beauty of the Good Feet Art support. It can place the feet into their ideal position and gives them the balance, the support, the comfort, and the relief of the pain. The bottom line is that the Good Feet Art Support could be a highly effective pain relief solution when nothing else has worked. The feet have a really big impact on how the rest of the body moves. The knees, the hips, the lower back especially. If the foot isn't properly aligned, all of these joints are gonna function incorrectly. That results in a lot of muscle tension and chronic pain. What I really like about the Good Feet system is that the right arch supports can put the foot in its proper alignment. So all the joints of the rest of the body will be aligned properly as well. And when the body's aligned, we can reduce the risk of injury and chronic pain. Visit the Good Feet store in Sacramento, Roseville, Modesto, Stockton, and Vacaville for a free fitting and test walk. Fidium Fiber Internet is worry-free and wallet-friendly. Whether you're working from home or just staying connected to family and friends, Fidium has what you need. Plans start at just 25 bucks a month. Rethink your internet provider. Visit FidiumFiber.com. It's time to trade in and trade up at Northern California's number one Honda dealer, Stockton Honda. Whether you're shopping new or pre-owned, Stockton Honda has the selection and savings. Plus, get top dollar for your trade. Come in today or go to StocktonHonda.com. It's all a click away. Anytime, anywhere, it's all here. StocktonHonda.com. This segment is brought to you by Aztec Solar. Skip the sales pitch. Calculate your solar savings at yourpowersavings.com. Live and local. Live and local. This is Sacktown Sports. What has to be done to stay out of the play? Well, Chris, it's a little bit confusing here to get to the 60. This is from Tim Maxwell of the Kings Herald. And basically, Chris, how he has it written out is Pelican slash Dallas. If they go 7-0 or if either team goes 7-0, Sack is out. 
if either team goes six and one, Sack is out. Now, or I guess if, yeah, if either team. Now, the other thing is he is assuming that the Kings don't have the... <laughs> the Kings don't have the tiebreaker in either. He goes, this is assuming that Dallas wins a tiebreaker. Obviously, the Pelicans already own it. Right. This shifts if the Kings win the Dallas tiebreaker, that, but that likely won't be decided until the last game or two of the season. So, basically, how he's doing it, this this would guarantee that the Kings get six regardless. So, this is if either if, – if, yeah, if either team goes four and three, now you're looking at sack six and one. Three and four, five and two. Two and five, four and three. So, I'm very confused as to who we should be cheering for between the two because we were talking about this at the beginning of the show or in the yeah. pre-show – the Pelicans, you don't have the tiebreaker, but without Brandon Ingram, they, they feel like they're more likely to right. lose their remaining games. The Mavs, you could have the tiebreaker, but it kind of feels like it's better if both yeah. teams lose, obviously. Yeah. But the chances of that happening aren't very high. Yeah. The good news is the Kings have a head-to-head against the Pelicans and the Suns still down the stretch. So yeah. you can catch the Pelicans, and, and obviously you still have to get over the hump with them. But, you know, even tying them puts a lot of pressure on them. And, you know, it's just you take it game by game at that point. And then with Phoenix, if the Kings do miss out on the sixth seed, they have an opportunity to play Phoenix head-to-head to hopefully get a game of separation for to get that home play-in situation because – uh, at the very least, if you are going to be in the play-in, you might as well play those games at home. Uh, so those are going to be really big games. I kind of think, like, all of those numbers, they make it sound like the Kings situation is pretty dire. Yeah. I just, I'm not going to, I'm going to try to not worry about other teams. Because it's truly, in a weird way, it is, if the Kings win these games, they're going to be put in a good situation. Yeah. That That's the, the core of it. And so... You know, it can get pretty exhausting to watch the games and then look back at the standings and figure out, okay, how did that do that? But then, like you said, who do I root for tonight on this? I think the easiest thing is just watch the Sacramento Kings. If they win, obviously it's going to be good for them. But if they go close to 500 the rest of this way, it's not going to be good enough. The Kings are going to have to play really good basketball to earn themselves out of this play-in situation. Pretty much, if they play good basketball, okay basketball, that's not going to be good enough at this point. Seven games left. The yeah. way I see it is, if you beat the Pelicans and the Suns, maybe that affords you three losses. Sure. But realistically, right. with seven games left, you're looking at five and two if you truly want to get out of there. You can't lose. I, so. I don't think you can lose three games. And you definitely can't lose to the Pelicans or the Suns. Yeah. No, I mean, those games are absolute must-wins. Um, you know, yeah, you're right. Like, you, you really can't lose more. I mean, there's not many games left. But, say, right. yeah, saying you, you can really only lose two of those games is pretty accurate. And, you know, you, you do have a, a downed, in a way, Knicks game on, on Thursday. OG's not playing. You have to take advantage of that. Boston – you don't know what you're going to get with them. Even if they're playing guys like Sam Hauser and Peyton Pritchard, they're still dangerous with those two guys. So, And they uh, haven't started sitting people they yet. They haven't have they? yet. No, no, they haven't yet. But they're at the point in the season where they can maybe, you know, you might not get a full bench clear, but maybe, you know, maybe Jason Tatum misses a game. Maybe Al Horford misses a game. Uh, those, you have to just take advantage of it. Uh, you have to be the, I think the biggest thing too is just, just, Remaining competitive, staying hungry, always looking like the the hungrier team in these situations when, you know, you're going to be playing other teams that have a lot of things to play for. When they play OKC, OKC still fighting for a top seed in the yeah. Western Conference. So they have to recognize, yeah, OKC, they're a good team. They might not be as hungry as what we are. No, they are because they're still fighting for something in their season as well. Uh, so, you know, it, it's going to be big on the Kings to just kind of focus on their own journey, focus on their own road. And, you know, where, where the chips fall at the end, that's that's where that's how it is. Uh, you really can't can't worry too much about the Pelicans and the Mavericks on a day to day basis. Yeah. What's crazy is it also matters who you lose to, because I just said right. five and two probably 
it gets you in the conversation right. for the sixth seed. But what's crazy is you lose to the wrong team. You lose to the yeah. Pelicans and the Suns. Yep. You could be in the eight. That's right. Yep. You could be in the eight and yep. go five and two. Five and two. Yeah. You cannot lose those games or none of this no, matters. None of it matters. Absolutely. And you you can maybe split them depending. Maybe. And again, even then, it depends which way and you to split get to it. to seven. To, at that That's point, I, seven, I, yeah, right. I think you have to be both yeah. to think about six. Yeah, no, it's it's uh, it's in a it's it's in a every game must be a win uh, kind of situation here, and you know it's it's a really really tough task. But the Kings have played really good basketball. It's not felt like it, but you know I saw Frankie tweet out yesterday the Kings have won five or ten of their last fifteen. Uh, I think they've won. Uh, you know, they it, it just hasn't quite looked pretty, but they've really really started to play uh, good basketball here post all-star break. I don't think it's, I don't think it's an impossible task. I mean, here we were, you know, talking about how this thing seems like it's cooked. I don't want to hear about six seed. I would say rightfully so. And then one day, you know, after last night, the Kings find themselves a game out of fifth place. So, you know, we might think it's cooked, but you know, things change so quickly results that you don't expect to happen, happen. What if golden state beats Dallas again when they play? What if they, what if Houston beats Dallas when they play them in the second time? Uh, There's, there's a lot of things that can go crazy that you didn't expect to happen. All the Kings have to do is take care of their, their side of the street and make sure, uh, make sure, Everything's good on their end. Yeah, with that being said, looking at the games today, Lakers at Wizards, I mean, the Lakers played with their food in Toronto last night, but they still took care of business. I would expect the Lakers to win that game as well. Thunder at Celtics, that's just a good game, period. I saw Shea and Jalen Williams are both out. Again? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're both going to be out again. So are they banged out, banged up, or just... I think so. Yes, I, I believe they are actually banged up because again, they they still are kind. They're I believe only a half game out of first place right. in the West, so they're so they're still not playing resting. No. They're not trying to do anything like that. You oh. also have Magic at Pelicans. That's actually, big. this is a big night. Yeah, Magic at Pelicans, Cavs at Suns. Go Cavs, go Magic. That's right. That, that is, would yeah. be huge. That would be huge for the Kings. I mean, yeah, like that's what that's what I'm saying, man. Like this thing can can shift overnight. All you have to do is is take care of your your business, and yeah, maybe teams like the Cavs can can do you a favor. Maybe Orlando, the East Coast, maybe the East can actually do the Kings some favors. I mean, it feels like every time the Kings need an Eastern Conference opponent to take down uh, one of their their close Western rivals. Every single time it feels like the East falls short. So right. hopefully tonight, uh, you know, that you've got a couple different opportunities. Maybe, you know, I know Minnesota's a bit out of it, but when we talk about seeding and where the Kings want to play, it'd be good for Minnesota to start losing some games. Of course, it would be great for New Orleans and Phoenix to lose as well. Magic fighting with the Knicks to hold on to that four seed. They're probably not going to catch the Cavs. They're two and a half games behind the Cavs with the Magic. Definitely want to hold on to that home court advantage over the Knicks because you got to go to Madison Square Garden. 916-339-1140. Let's get to TC. He wants to be part of the conversation. What's up, TC? What you got? Man, what's going on? Alan Watkins, what's up? What's up, man? How you feeling? Man, I'm feeling good, man. You know, that was a good... Y'all got me better? Yeah, Yeah, we got you now. Okay, now check it out, man. And listen, I feel good, man. You know what I mean? I, I told y'all we're going to need all hands on deck. Davion, Trey, Ty, like everybody's going to have to be on deck. Hey, look, check it out. I truly believe, man, we can jump into the five or six. We just need some help. You know what I mean? And we both also, first and foremost, the Kings got to handle their business. Right. We got a dope back-to-back coming. Boston and New York, bro. That's We need those. It, it's really not about the West. We need those games for our mental. Right. Mm-hmm. Even if we don't get it, even if we even if we beat them, too, and we still got to get take seven and take it that route. I want to beat those dudes just for our mental, bro. Beat New York and Boston. Know that we can hang with those dudes. Also, like we can get some help. Who they play tonight? The Magic, the Pelicans. And then they turn around and if Wimby can get big. Mm-hmm. I think they play the Spurs after that, bro. If Wimby can have one of those games like, look, bro, we can for sure still get the six or fifth. It's not a range. But first and foremost, the Kings got to handle their business they can't go into this situation looking like oh we're looking for everybody to give us a hand up no bro y'all win the games and let the chips may fall how they fall that's all i got 
There you go. Thanks for the call, TC. Check, yeah. Check it out. Obviously, it would be nice to get some help, but ultimately, you you have to win yourself. And I'm and looking at that, Chris, based on those numbers. Yeah. yeah the the easier way to put this is that the next game is a must win. Yeah, I That's mean, not the, one you can afford with with the Celtics right after. And I know they're not really playing for anything, but with the Celtics right after, and you still got the Thunder, and you still I mean, got they're the all Suns. Must wins. They are. They're all must. Wins. They are. You know what? It's much. It's much more simple to put it that way. When we return, continuing the conversation, former King gets named into the Hall of Fame. Styles and Watkins, Sackdown Sports. You never know what you might hear when listening to a Sacramento Kings game. Out of Keegan, going for another triple. Man, is he feeling it. Keegan, can he do it? Yes, there's number 11, Keegan Murray. Keegan steps back. He just knocked down his 12th three-pointer, a Kings franchise record. He's got 45 points. Never miss a moment of Sacramento Kings basketball with Sacktown Sports and the Sacktown Sports app. Hi, I'm Henry Winkler. My eyes are very important to me. My eyes connect me with everything I love. I loved my late father-in-law dearly. He always lit up a room, but his vision dimmed with age. He had age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. And since partnering with Apellus, I've learned there's an advanced form of dry AMD called geographic atrophy, or GA. His struggle with vision loss made me want to help others know about GA's warning signs. For some, colors appear dull or washed out. For others, hazy or blurred vision make it hard to see details, like fine print on price tags. Many have trouble seeing in the dark, making driving at night difficult. GA gets worse over time and cannot be reversed. If you think you have GA, don't wait. Treatments are available. Ask a retina specialist about FDA-approved treatments for GA and go to gawon'twait.com. When I want to stretch out after a long day, my sofa needs to be comfortable, but it also needs to look attractive and inviting when guests come to visit. I am Frank LaRosa with a word about Naturewood Home Furnishings. We spend so much time on our living room sofas that we forget they're a focal point and a hint to our decorating tastes. Right now, during Naturewood Home Furnishings sofa sale, you can save on every sofa, including gallery-exclusive custom-ordered flex steel furniture. Whether you're interested in a new sofa, sectional, or recliner, you can choose from hundreds of colors and fabrics. Nobody has more styles and choices than Naturewood Home Furnishings. And when it comes right down to it, it's all about choices and always about quality. Shop Naturewood for the look you love at a price you'll love even more. Visit Naturewood Home Furnishings right now for this remarkable sofa sale. Off Highway 50 at Hazel, look for the water wheel. Elevate your golf game at Timber Creek Golf Course in Roseville. Just named to the prestigious Golfer's Choice 2024 Top 25 Public Golf Courses in all of California by Golf Pass. Timber Creek offers an unparalleled experience. Our revamped practice facility features a grass driving range, expanded putting greens, and a chipping area complete with sand traps. Whether you're a pro or just starting your golf journey, Timber Creek is the place to be. Visit us and discover why we're the talk of Sacramento and beyond. Unwind and tee off at Timber Creek Golf Course. Guys, your testosterone level impacts your energy, drive, weight, hair loss, and even ED. Revive Men's Health Sacramento will check your T-level for free. For your free T-level check, exam, and consultation, call 916-277-8599 or visit revivemenshealth.com. Sacktown Sports. Check us out on YouTube. Search Sacktown Sports and subscribe. Vince Carter, former king. Chauncey Billups named to the Naismith Hall of Fame. Chris, is Vince Carter, is that a name that we don't talk about enough when you say most influential players? I'm not saying he's um, above the Michael Jordans or the Stephs or the LeBrons or the AIs. But I mean, he took over a period of time in the yeah. NBA. It's almost like, <laughs> I, I don't want to say like the opposite of influential, but he almost was so good at his craft that he shut it down completely. Mm -hmm. Like it's, I mean, like Zach Levine is, is probably the great counter to it, but like, 
you know, we talked about the dunk contest when it was the all-star weekend. And I do think that in a weird way, Vince set the bar so high in the dunk contest that no one could ever reach it, that it was almost intimidating. It was like, okay, LeBron's going to do the dunk contest, but all you're really going to do is be disappointed. Uh And in a weird way, Vince was almost so good at dunking that we've never seen anybody even touch where he was before. And I don't know if anybody would, I I mean, I don't know if anyone would say Vince is even influential with them because he was just so, it'd almost be like saying Wemby is an influence for me. It's like, well, nobody looks like that. Well, nobody can jump like Vince Carter ever had. So Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if influential is the right word, but maybe just under like, I don't even know if underrated is the right word, but he, he just has a very unique, interesting story too. Cause I wasn't around for, you know, obviously he kind of was big in the NBA more so in my childhood, but Mm -hmm. from what I understand Vince is kind of a polarizing figure in he's really, really talented, obviously and crazy athletic, did he actually end up living up to the hype? I think is a, is what the the career conversation about Vince was early in his career. Like, should he have been somebody right. who was a generational talent? And he was definitely a generational dunker, but should he have been a better basketball player? Yeah, I mean he he had opportunities. I mean the world was at his fingertips, and yeah, he never really got over the hump to yeah. become a dude like that but i mean early 2000s and and he made the dunk contest he, cool for this generation he literally sure. he literally did and and everything that he did bring to the table as far as the influential part is a little bit tough because nobody else can jump right, like that right. right if you can dress like ai you yeah. can That's try right. you to put shoot a like ste- on, you can yeah. do things <laughs> like that but vince carter was one of one but it was more of just the highlight reels yeah. that he would create. Totally. And as a basketball player, I mean, I think besides his jumping ability, his ability to transform yes. his game. If, if to your point, if somebody told you when Vince Carter was 30, okay, he played, he actually played 82 games that year. He was all-star and that was when he was with the Nets, right? So maybe when the, that that decline started. So let's Towards say the Grizzlies era. Le, yeah, let's yeah the, the Grizzlies era. Yes, for sure. Even before that, let's say when he was when he was thirty four, that he would play for nine more years. Yeah. Somebody would say that you're crazy. When he was on yeah. Phoenix, he played about seventy games. <laughs> Barely remember in, that. in Phoenix. That was 2010, 2011. Was Dallas before or after that? Dallas was after that. Okay. And then wow. Memphis. Okay. And then Sac. Wow. And then the Hawks. Wow. That's, I mean, what, I mean, that, yeah, no, I mean, straight up, no. First off, I would, not, no. I would say he's not playing 10 more years. You're insane. Uh, and yeah, you, I mean, you make a great point. Like the fact that he turns from the ultimate, I mean, the human highlight reel or whatever, um, to, or half man, half amazing, of course, is, is the best nickname for Vince to be that guy and then transition to those last 10 years of his career being like a 40% three point shooter as tying into a conversation we were talking about yesterday when it came to Rajon Rondo Mm -hmm. as the league transformed Vince is as well. Somebody who noticed if I'm going to stay in this league, right. I need to be, I need, I can't be Duncan. I can't be around, I can't, not Tim Duncan. I can't be dunking. Mm-hmm. I can't be around the rim doing that because these young dudes and their athleticism is at a different level. I'm going to have to be a three point shooter. And that's exactly what he was. And, and he was great at it. I mean, even here in Sacramento, he found a way to have a role on this team at 40 one years old or whatever. And, you know, we even got a couple dunks here as well. So he can uh, still dunk now. That's why still definitely, I wouldn't be surprised if he could still 360. I've definitely seen him on TV in a full suit dunk, which yeah. is just incredible. You have Vince Carter. He shot, he shot 35%, 34 from three for Sacramento. That was in 2017, really? 2018. And, Honestly, I think the difference is his minutes continue to go down, but his attempts, his shot attempts were were always around the same thing. So he really always shot the three. He shot it at 37% for his career. It just felt like yeah. towards the end of his career, that was all he was kind of able to do. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that, that was that that's really the way of putting it is he was just in the corner and he was he was reliable though. I mean, he is he's a guy who uh kind of like Russell Westbrook now, where He's 
he had such a big role previously that this role that he's in now, it's small potatoes in terms of pressure. And you're not going to get a lot of guys who are, you know, shooting specialists, but were, you know, built for bigger moments than that. And that's what I think made Vince so, so good as he was just a guy that you could rely on every time he was on the floor. Uh, and you wouldn't really have to worry about, you know, is this moment too big for him or is he going to do the right thing? Uh, he he just always was was ready to to make big plays, uh, even late in his career. You want to you want to know something or hear something that's kind of nuts. And maybe it's because of maybe it's why they're they're going in around the same time. But, you know, we talk about Vince Carter and, and his ability to play for a long period of time. Vince Carter was a rookie in the 1999 season. Mm. You have Chauncey Billups, who was a rookie in the 1998 season. Mm. Chauncey played until he was 37. Chauncey came in at 21, and he was done playing at 37. Vince Carter came in at 22, and he was done at 43. So both of them really, really long yeah. careers. Yeah, and I don't think a lot of people think about Chauncey as far as playing that long in the league but yeah chauncey billups five-time all-star obviously big shot billups with the pistons the 2004 nba champ finals mvp three-time all-star two-time all defensive player or all defensive team you have vince carter eight-time all-star two-time all nba 1999 rookie of the year and they both were they both won those sportsmanship awards that Harrison Barnes really? is up for. That's it, it is actually really interesting that Chauncey Billups makes the Hall of Fame too. It's I think it's uh kind of a, a feather in the cap of everyone who says that the you know the NBA or the basketball hall of fame is probably the easiest hall of fame of to to get into. Mm -hmm. Um, because he is he feels like somebody who who is a, a borderline candidate where yeah, Chauncey was really good and he he did have the championship, but you know, is Ch to say Chauncey Billups was a Hall of Famer. I, I I don't know if that if that was a guarantee. You know, like I I think that he's he he is kind of right on the line of yeah, he was an All Star. You said three time All Star. That's not yeah, a, he, was, he, was, he was three time All NBA, three time he was All NBA. five time okay. All Star. There we go. I mean, that's a little bit more, but again, that still feels like you're you're creeping on. Okay, really good player or Hall of Famer. I think the championship puts him over the top, but right. that was, you know, that that was kind of the thing of that Pistons team is there was no true star on that team. Yeah. And now I think they have they know they have at least uh, uh I know Ben Wallace got in the other year and now Chauncey. I'm not sure if Rashid is in, but to me Rashid would have been the the one that I definitely would have put. Yeah, in. Vince had Chauncey, as far as all stars, he had eight, and Chauncey had five. Obviously, Chauncey has the finals right. MVP and championship. Chauncey is a three time All NBA, whereas Vince was two time All NBA. Interesting. So I, I just think ultimately they really, they really love to reward longevity when it comes to oh, the yeah. Smith Hall of Fame. Yeah, for sure. And if somebody plays for seventeen years and won a championship, that that person is going to get in and. Really, his his minutes didn't dip. Chauncey's he was playing thirty minutes at the age of thirty five. It was when he turned thirty six and he was with the Clippers in twenty thirteen. Yeah. He dropped down to nineteen minutes. Then twenty fourteen, he had his swan song with the Pistons, and at that point, he's playing sixty minutes and then he retires after that. Yeah, and I mean, it was it was a great career, and I mean, he's already a head coach. It, it, I haven't loved what he's done over there in Portland, but people speak really highly of his basketball mind. And, you know, I mean, his nickname, we all know it. It's Big Shot. It's, oh, my goodness. I almost said Big Shot Rob, which mm -hmm. is not the guy that we're going to talk about. Um, but, no, I mean, Cha Chauncey was somebody who always, always, always was ready to hit the biggest shots in games. And he had, he had a really interesting career, too. Like, it took a while for him to kind of get his feet under him. I think he was with the Celtics and then got traded and, and had to kind of figure out uh, how to how to you know establish himself as an NBA player and he was he was a fantastic I mean those those I mean obviously here in Sacramento we were definitely rooting for that 2003 Pistons team but um just the way that that he played basketball um was was great I mean like that the, you don't really have a player in the NBA who plays like how Chauncey Billups played point guard when we get back more Kings talk 
and also discussing Stefan Diggs being traded to the Texans and an A's conversation. Styles and Watkins, Sacktown Sports. You never know what you might hear when listening to a Sacramento Kings game. Out of Keegan, going for another triple. Man, is he feeling it. Keegan, can he do it? Yes, there's number 11, Keegan Murray. Keegan steps back. He just knocked down his 12th three-pointer, a Kings franchise record. He's got 45 points. Never miss a moment of Sacramento Kings basketball with Sacktown Sports and the Sacktown Sports app. Group is not a law firm. Are you a victim of the Tomshire trap and think there's no way out? I'm Chuck McDowell, founder of Wesley Financial Group, the original Tomshire cancellation expert, and I'm here to tell you that there is a way out. We've helped over 30,000 families out of financial hardship by getting them out of bad timeshares. If your timeshare agreement goes on forever, if you were told timeshares are a great investment or your maintenance fees will never go up, you have questions. We have the answer. Sneezing, coughing, a stuffy nose, runny nose, post-nasal drip, interrupted sleeping. I just I was groggy at the end of the day. Allergies and sinus congestion were making Jana miserable. Then a friend recommended Navage. Navage provides immediate drug-free congestion relief, flushing your nasal passages with refreshing saline and sucking out mucus germs and other airborne irritants. Navage helps you breathe easier, sleep better, and feel your best right away. Navage gave me instant relief. I didn't have to wait 30 minutes. I didn't have to wait an hour, 90 minutes. I didn't have to wait. I didn't have to wait a minute. I just, I ran the rents and I felt immediately, I felt better. Stop suffering from congestion and start breathing and feeling your best again with Navage, N-A-V-A-G-E. I've had people ask me how I find relief and I tell them Navage immediately. This thing is amazing. Navage is available at Navage.com or at Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, and Rite Aid. It's Coach Doug Christie here to remind you if you want a deal that's a slam dunk, go see the winning team at Folsom Lake Ford. Folsom Lake Ford is your truck headquarters with all your American-made favorites, like America's best-selling F-Series, F-150s, and Super Duties, or spacious new explorers and expeditions, plus a huge selection of Broncos and Bronco sports, all in stock now at Folsom Lake Ford. In the Folsom Auto Mall, you can buy any new Ford with zero down on approved credit, save big with low interest finance rates, and Folsom Lake Ford always pays top dollar for your trade. Check out the huge selection of inventory online at FolsomLakeFord.com or stop by the dealership to see their most recent arrival. Looking for something special? Give them a call and tell them Doug Christie sent you. They'll help you out. Hurry to Folsom Lake Ford in the Folsom Auto Mall, your trusted dealer, my trusted dealer for over 35 years and counting. Thinking of remodeling your home? Say goodbye to endless internet searches and visit Subcontractors United. Find a list of three pre-qualified and licensed contractors in each home service category. From cabinets to landscapers and everything in between, Subcontractors United makes finding qualified contractors free and easy with no accounts to set up. Visit SubcontractorsUnited.com and experience the joy of stress-free home improvement. Save time and money at SubcontractorsUnited.com. From the Power Business Technology Toshiba Studios, KHTKAM Sacramento, KYMX HD2 Sacramento, the only station in Sacramento giving you local sports coverage from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. Sacktown Sports. <laughs> Sacktown Sports. Call or text at 916-339-1140. Was it the three blocks in 12 minutes? Was it the Davion threes? Was it the Keegan Murray? Oh, Keegan! What impressed you the most from last night's win? All Powell got caught up. It's sloppy right now. Murray, he got him. Somebody call 911 because Murray just caught a body. 
I'm going to go with uh, Davion Mitchell, three-point performance, uh, just the continuation of him knocking down shots, uh, but at the same time being a pest on the defensive end. Uh, you know, I, I think that he's really big for this team, owning their defensive identity, their newfound defensive identity. And, uh, yeah, just want to definitely give give as much credit as possible to uh, to Davion because he, he's – he's I think he's – I don't want to say he's been given an unfair shake, but I think – uh, he just hasn't really been given this this freedom of opportunity, and uh, this opportunity has definitely not been wasted by Davion. 916-339-1140. If you want to be a part of the conversation, all guests and callers, join us from the Folsom Lake Honda hotline. Folsom Lake Honda, your one-stop Honda shop. Yeah, Davion is a great pick, and it's hard to start to go away from it. There's a lot to choose from. I mean, Trey, you could throw Trey Lyles in there as well. Yeah, for sure. I really do like you could throw some bonus in there as well. I really do like what we saw from Trey Lyles and even Sasha getting 10 minutes and, and still getting his sea legs under him. Yeah, Davion is is probably the pick, but I'm actually gonna go with Keegan Murray yeah. and eclipsing that that shot amount that he hadn't done back to back ever in his career because that's just him understanding the moment. Yeah. And it, they're not all gonna go in, but you have to take them. Yep. We have no choice. Yep. No, especially at this point in the season. Like it's huge for, for Keegan to uh to to kind of take that next step forward. Like he, you know, we we talked earlier in this season about how the Kings were, you know, doing midterms and doing finals. You know, I, I talked about it yesterday on the post game. Next season, year three, you're you could maybe be considered a veteran at this point, at, at that point. So at this being the the end of Keegan's year two, and it's been an up and uh, you know I would say that this is qualified as a sophomore slump. It just hasn't been uh, as good as it was in his rookie year, and obviously we know that there's a lot of things that have gone into that. Not saying he hasn't improved in total on his game, but definitely you just look at the raw numbers and, and the percentages are down. Of course, his point totals are up and other things, but um, you know this is a really good opportunity for a final test for Keegan. He's been given the opportunity now to have all of those shots. Let's see what it looks like. You've had a year and, you know, three quarters of time to, to figure out how to be an NBA player. Let's see, you know, you, you coined the, the term cocoon season for Keegan early this year. Let's see him start to come out and, and let's see what that butterfly looks like a bit. And uh, there's no better time than now. The Kings need it. And I think it would be a, a very good step in the development of Keegan if he ends this season with, you know, five to eight games of averaging 20 points and then yeah. go into the postseason with that confidence. If Keegan can average, you know, 16 to 20 points per game in a playoff season, in a playoff series, how big is that for where how he enters next season with the confidence of, oh, I, I can do this easy. This should be how I start the year. Who knows how I finish it? Yeah, and we know how important he is. And look, man, when things aren't going well, I'll say some crazy stuff sure. about the offseason and things like that. But Keegan Murray, we know what his ceiling could be, right? And we want to see it here in Sacramento. But you have to see him continue to grow. And that's what's so crazy. I mean, you're talking about Davion Mitchell and you're and you're sitting here saying, Chris, I mean, he's been here for three years. There's just not a lot of time. And when you have guys that are that are coming into the league and some guys take longer than others to develop, but some guys don't. Yeah. And when you don't have a when you don't feel like you have a lot of time and when other teams are, are looking like they're going to leapfrog sure. you, it causes you to make decisions that the fan base may not like right because in all these trades we did this whole thing during the trade deadline or before the trade deadline oh let's get him him and him for for hb and herder guys that you don't not not you specifically chris sure. but guys that the fan base is okay with parting from and the fact that you're okay you're so okay with parting from them means you're probably not going to get that much back so somebody like keegan murray you want they want him. I'll put it to you like this. I don't know if the Kings, I think the Kings want him to be untouchable. I don't know that he actually is untouchable. I think this past dra trade deadline, he definitely was. But moving forward, I think they're to the point where we'd like to think of him as untouchable. But 
there are things that we want to see from him to cement that. And those things, crazy enough, could be done in the next seven games. Yeah, no, for sure. I think that there is a a chance that he becomes untouchable. I think that's a good way of putting it. I would say he probably will be regardless, but I think your bigger point is, look, if Keegan does what I just, if he averages 20 points the rest of the season, they're not going to trade him yeah. probably no matter what. Yeah. But if he does, if the Kings have this opportunity for him and he falls short and he has a couple, you know, 10 point games, maybe he's got a, a four of 12 in there. So I don't know. It just doesn't feel like he took a, a big leap at the end of the year. Maybe, like you said, they would definitely like to not trade him, but in terms of untouchable, maybe there still is some some options out there where they're going to explore it. But I think that that's a perfect way of putting it. They're hoping that Keegan shows enough at the end of this year to say, we cannot think of a future of this team without that guy. Exactly. We think that they're at that point now, but I don't think it's 100% solidified if you're serious about winning next year. Yeah. That that's literally it. Yeah. And you you gotta look around at the rest of the sure. league, and that could cause you to do some sure. things that you may not want. It rushes people. Sure. Right. If 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 you see somebody behind you yeah. or somebody passes you, the your your natural instinct is to try to catch them. Yes. And what you're seeing OKC do, you're going to try to catch them. And it could be it could be anybody, right? I mean, if if Paul George and the Clippers that thing blows up, some names are going to get thrown around, and you have Minnesota now. Who are they established? People love Anthony Edwards. Sure. People want to say he could be the next face of the NBA. They're going to get Carl Anthony Towns back. Right. They they got Rudy Gobert. They got some younger guys as well. Do we think that's a fluke? I don't think so. So they're going to be some some tough decisions to make, and maybe they won't be as tough heading into next season if you see what you want to see from some specific guys. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, and like you said, I mean, there's tons of teams out there that you could realistically say are are passing the key, like even New Orleans. Like, where are they yeah. at in their development? Dallas, I mean, you know, you, Luca's still a younger guy. Kyrie, I guess, is is inching towards 30 if he's not already. Um, you know, so that, that might be a little bit of an older situation, but they're built around – winning now and, that, and that's the king's timeline as well so there's a ton of teams that are in the hunt right now and i think you're seeing a bit of a transition period of you know you see the lakers and the warriors still down there doing their thing but there's a a lot of young talent and you you always mention memphis as well they're down this year they're not going to be down for long yeah. um there's a lot of really good young teams in this league and uh you always say if you're not getting better you're getting worse I think that could be a situation where the Kings, you know, that that could be where they found themselves last offseason. They can't do that again this year. And I think, you know, the ups and downs of this year, the inconsistencies of this year have definitely, at least hopefully, pointed a, a bright light at the fact that this team does have to make major improvements in the offseason. But to your point, I think it's still uh it's still TBD on what the the Kings options will be in terms of moving off of certain players right right and, and even davion i mean yeah we just had the conversation about davion i think he fits into this and he, maybe to an extent keon ellis he had a he, i don't think so keon's on a great deal mm -hmm. it, there doesn't really make sense to move him but i think there's tons of guys where they're figuring out sasha trey which one of you two are we going to keep long term i don't know if that's going to be something that the kings can have long term so um all of those decisions to an extent will i don't know if they'll be definitively made, but mm -hmm. you know, you're going to find you're going to get closer to some answers uh, the rest of the season. Looking at who's in the play in right now. And it's funny because you look at it and you think one of these things is not like the other. When you see the warriors, the Lakers, the Suns, and the Kings. Yeah. But, and all of those, all of those three teams including the Kings, but besides the Kings, because of their star power, feel like they can just turn it on. Right. Right. Do you actually think, and you can include the Kings in this conversation too. Do you actually think any of the seven teams or the four teams that are currently in the play-in, do you actually think they could really, it comes down to the nuggets, right? Because I think you would feel maybe not the Suns, but I think you would feel like any of these teams could probably beat 
the Timberwolves, and one of them is going to get the Nuggets, so they're they're going to be right. done. That's done. But really, the other way of asking this is, do you think the Timberwolves and the Thunder are as vulnerable as people are making it seem like they are? I think so. I think honestly, OKC is more vulnerable than Minnesota is. I think Minnesota has a good playoff formula of really, really high level defense. They have their star in Anthony Edwards. They're going to get cap back early in the, you know, in like, I think game four, game five is where they've projected him to come back. So it's not the first round of the first round. Mm -hmm. So it's not like they're going to be without him for much longer. Um, I think they can get through a first round without Cat. I just think that the Kings have matched up particularly well against them. But I, th- I think Minnesota's got everything working in their favor. OKC really is heavily reliant on Shea dropping 30. Uh, in the post, Chet has been phenomenal. Um, rookie of the year if, if Wemby doesn't exist. But at the end of the day, Anthony Davis is eating Chet Holmgren's lunch for all all day, all series, mm-hmm. you know, he's going to end up with 30 and 15. Sabonis, same thing. I think that's their biggest flaw is they just don't have a big uh, that's going to that's gonna present really any problems. Maybe in a Phoenix situation, it doesn't show itself uh, as much, but I, I just think that OKC more than likely is the team that gets upset if any of them do. Yeah, and they're the youngest, and they're – they're essentially what the Kings were last Pretty much. season. Pretty much so exactly that you get you you're up against one of the teams that have done it, like yep. the the Warriors or the really it's just the Warriors or the Lakers because the Suns haven't really done anything and the Kings are still no. young themselves. But yeah, I I I feel like again, as much as people like Anthony Edwards, they don't really like Carl Anthony Towns. They don't really like Gobert. Yeah, and that might be skewing reality for the sure. for the T Wolves and they've tricked off some games in the playoffs in the past. The yeah, OKC again, it's tough to go from a non-factor to just winning a championship. Yeah. It sometimes it happens, yeah. but it would be it would be really impressive if they pull that off. Yeah, I just I mean it doesn't happen in the NBA. Nobody nobody just sparks up you know a meteoric rise uh, unless you bring in a massive superstar like the Warriors did with KD, nobody just jumps from tenth to to first and then wins a championship in their first year. They're going to have to go through some adversity, and you know I do think OKC stylistically is built more like a regular season team as well. Um, I just you know it's great that Shea and Jalen Williams are having fantastic seasons, but you know I don't know how often Shea and Jalen Williams and it's going to be a big moment for them. But can they be? Uh, two of the best three players in a series. I'm not sure. I mean, you know, specifically from when the Kings have played OKC, I feel like they've done a really good job of making life difficult for Jalen Williams. And I don't know if we've seen Shea really have, uh, you know, 30 point big games. Like he seems to have every single night uh, besides when they play the Kings. So I, I don't know. I maybe, maybe my view of OKC is a little skewed because the Kings have really had their number this year, but um, I, I just think that stylistically, there's a lot of, and even matchup wise, which is all pl- playoffs is about. I feel like, you know, teams like the Lakers specifically would give OKC a lot of problems. Coming up next, the women's college basketball final four or elite eight, I should say, break some records. Also, Stefan Diggs traded to the Texans. What does that mean for Brandon Ayuk and A's conversation? And of course, more Kings talk. Styles and Watkins, Sacktown Sports. Keep it here to Sacktown Sports for the Sacramento Kings push toward the postseason. Get analysis from our local shows, breakdowns from our Kings insiders, and all the thrilling moments from the G-Man. Keegan Murray scrambles to save it. He gives it now to Barnes. One on the clock, desperate three on the way. He scores the triple. Game tied at 121 apiece. 17 for Barnes. Sacktown Sports is your proud home of the Sacramento Kings. This is for the men who never settle, the ones who believe only quitters and a game and a tie, the type of guys who choose the bar with the biggest TVs to overcompensate for theirs at home, and the men who use PTO to catch afternoon basketball in March with the boys. This is the Lodge mentality. This is Twin Peaks. 
Who wants to settle for a single TV? With more TVs, bigger screens, plus our fabulous scenic views, there's more to watch at Twin Peaks. When you take the time to shop at Folsom Lake Honda, there's one thing you'll always find. Happy people ready to serve you. As a family owned and operated dealership since 2009, customer service is our number one priority. Our customers love doing business with us and you will too. Looking to own or lease? During the spring sales event, drive a brand new Accord or Civic. Visit us today at FolsomLakeHonda.com, your one-stop Honda shop. Folsom Lake Honda. This segment is brought to you by Aztec Solar. Skip the sales pitch. Calculate your solar savings at yourpowersavings.com. Live and local. Live and local. This is Sacktown Sports. From the 916. All guests and callers join us from Folsom Lake Honda Hotline. Folsom Lake Honda, one-stop Honda shop. 916-339-1140 if you want to be part of the conversation. Text line or call line or on YouTube. Shout out to the sec chat. From the 916, if Minnesota loses first round, I think it's fair to question if this season was a fluke. Well, of course that's fair to question because that's what people were saying about the Kings. Yeah, no, definitely. If Minnesota loses in the first round, it's definitely a failure. I mean, yeah. You know, that's not necessarily, you know, I know Giannis had the sound bite last year, but Minnesota, no, I mean, they, they, no, you, you can't pay what they're paying that team uh, and then play the season that they played and lose in the first round. But a failure Honestly. versus a fluke, a fluke means to me, oh, that it's, yeah, that, that you it's probably, not, right. It would definitely, not gonna repeat it would it. be a failure. A fluke would mean they probably won't be what a top three seed again right which i don't know i think think people would people might call it that but i don't know personally if i think that it would be a fluke it would just mean that they're choke artists i mean how many how many seasons yeah didn't the 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 celtics were always a top seed and they still haven't gotten it done yeah they're not a fluke right no it's not a fluke if you don't have playoffs like just because you lose in the playoffs doesn't mean i guess regular season you won't be good right specifically first round to be fair, I even then, I mean, you know, I don't think they would be if I I think Anthony Edwards, I, I'm one of those people who thinks Anthony Edwards is going to be the face of the league. I definitely think just because he's on the team, Minnesota is going to be one of the top seeds in the Western Conference for a long time. It, and if they do lose, whether that's what to the Kings, the Suns, could be any of them Lakers, if Warriors. they would they would get the out besides to the Kings. Yeah. If they lost to the Warriors, right, LeBron, I guess you could put KD in there. If sure. they lost to any of those three teams, I don't. I'm not saying they would get a pass, but it would right. be that's greatness. If well, they lost to the yeah. Kings, people might say it was a fluke. No, absolutely. Yeah, you're you're. That's a great point because if you lose to any of those teams, mm-hmm. also the story is going to be about them. It's right. not going to be about Minnesota. No mm-hmm. one's even Minnesota was just the vessel to talk more about yeah. LeBron and Steph. If it happens to Sacramento, well, we know they don't have any Sacramento talking points, so it's only going to be Minnesota blew this. This is all Minnesota. Not the Kings had yeah. no part in this. The Minnesota just choked. This is more about Minnesota choking. So, uh, yeah, you know, I, I still don't think it'll be a fluke, but it will possibly signify that this team doesn't have the mental fortitude that maybe it takes to win a championship. Again, I would compare that if that does happen, maybe you start to hear, you know, Dirk when when he was uh just always that number 1 seed in the western conference they got we believed right the we believe mm-hmm. warriors mm-hmm. was against uh that Dallas Mavericks team i think that minnesota would probably be viewed as a team like that a little bit earlier you mentioned that home court advantage maybe isn't seen as in, as important yeah anymore and and for the Lakers to get as far as they did. Obviously, they never had home court. Mm-hmm. And obviously, the Heat never had home court. Do you feel like, I don't know, within the last five five years, five to ten years, players care less about home court advantage or teams care less about home court advantage in the playoffs? I think that – I think teams will always care about home court advantage just because – it's the simple fact of, hey, you're in a game seven. Would you like to play it at home or on the road? 
of course you're going to mm. want to play it at home and, and just have as many things working in your favor as possible. Um, but I think that it's, you know, I, I think that it's, it's something that does, it's not the end all be all. And, you know, if I'm sure if you look at the records, more teams have won, you know, home game seven significantly more than road game sevens. But I, I just think in terms of the, oh, the crowd environment is so, you know, it, it rattles us or, or anything like that. I don't think that really plays as much of a factor as what it used to. It just feels like these guys are so used to playing in, you know, packed gyms with guys who, who aren't rooting for them. I just don't think that really it has the same mental weight that it used to. I have a theory on this, okay. if you will. And I think part of it, honestly, is... If you look back to the 90s and the 80s and the 70s when all you had to worry about was a newspaper and things sure. like that, right. I, I think social media has made a lot of these athletes numb to criticism. I, I, they Criticism still bugs them. Sure. But there's so much of it. There's so much content. Unless your name is Russell Westbrook or somebody truly crosses a line – a lot of these guys are just kind of numb yeah. to okay, this random person's making fun of me. Go look at go look at my my Twitter right now. Go look at my my Instagram right now. I'm we get flamed all the time. Right. And I do think part of that has had these guys again, like you said, game seven, of course you want it at home. Right. But I think these guys are so numb well to <laughs> to just uh oh. No, I was gonna say, I mean, we just think about the game seven that was here last year. Yeah. Didn't seem to matter, did it? Did not seem to matter. Didn't seem to really throw off Steph's game at all. Mm-hmm. Warriors, they'd been there, done that. They weren't really shook at all by the by the weight of playing Game Seven on the road. It was, I mean, there was no difference. I yeah. mean, really, the Kings won. And then to that same point, the Kings won Game Six on the road mm-hmm. in Golden State in a situation where you would think, okay, here's a team that has all this experience, smell blood in the water have an opportunity to close out the series on their home floor. They got hit. Kings killed them. They got, and then the hit. very next game, same thing happens to the Kings. So, you know, I'm not saying it doesn't matter, but it just doesn't feel like the history of this league shows that that's where things have typically been. And it feels like there's more and more cases of teams, not only in the NBA either. Like I think it happens in the NFL. And then again, in baseball, it seems to happen more than any other sport where it just, doesn't I, I think it, it's a nice talking point. Yeah. It's just not something that I think ends up playing out maybe as much as what we might say it does. Yeah. Do you guys think there's an argument to be made that the home court advantage worked against the Kings in game seven? It, that's definitely that's a point off. Like, sure. do you think too much pressure? On, I mean, on if you want sides, yeah, yeah, play devil's advocate. Yeah. Here. There's two sides of that. There's people love being the villain. And I think because of that relationship with, the Kings and the Warriors, Steph really dug into that. And number two, the weight of the world was on the Kings. Yeah. The weight of the world. You're at home. This is your opportunity. You got to do it against the Warriors. So, yeah, I I do definitely think that's a thing. And you win and go play the Lakers, too, which is like a – well, actually, at that time, I don't know if it was set in stone, the Lakers. But eventually it would have been. Still, yeah. Crazy stuff. Yeah. For me – when I look at basketball specifically, if you're not out of that first quarter with a 10 point lead, <laughs> that feels a lot. And I'm you got to hit them in the mouth. If you don't hit them in the mouth, so. I don't think that I don't think profession I don't think these guys it bugs them anymore. Didn't the Warriors this just happened with the Warriors and Lakers was that last night where the Warriors were up, they had that lead against the or was it Dallas Dallas Dallas. I don't know what it was after the first quarter but the Warriors were leading and then they blew it but playoffs are different I just think I mean I I think you're oh again you're always going to want to be at home I think there still is obviously a pressure of playing on the road like it's just different I mean there's there's obviously a ton of pressure to be expected to perform on your home floor but at the same time I don't I would much rather deal with that pressure than oh my gosh the Warriors just hit two threes in a row and now chase centers acting like oh, you know the sure. roof just got yeah. blown off the building and then having to deal with the emotions of telling yourself it's okay it's fine it's just the, you know let them cheer whatever mm-hmm. you just got to pick away at it 
you know, I, I think both situations are, are tough, but, um, you know, I, again, I just think you're always going to opt for, Hey, I'm sleeping in my own bed. I know this route. I walk in and I have this routine of what I do versus, you know, yeah, the warriors, they sleeping in unfamiliar beds and, you know, just the, the, the uncomfortability of going into the game, I still think is, is a big enough advantage to want, but I do hear you. I mean, the Kings talk about it with their defense all the time. They create their own energy on the road. And so you don't necessarily have to worry about nerves or anything like that because you're just so focused on, Hey, we know things are going to be against us. We just, we know going into it, we need to focus on, on what we need to focus on. Coming up next, a future NBA hall of famer gives credit to the early two thousands Kings for certain things, and you'll never guess who he gives credit for for modern-day spacing. Styles and Watkins, Sacktown Sports. Subscribe to Sacktown Sports on YouTube and watch the Carmichael Dave Show with Jason Ross, Styles and Watkins, and the Drive Guys, live Monday through Friday from 6 to 6. Plus, view archive shows and exclusive content. Subscribe at YouTube.com slash Sacktown Sports. Bonneville International Radio Station Contests are open to participants at least 18 years of age and older that are residents of California and who reside in one of the six counties that make up the Sacramento metro area, unless otherwise specified. Employees or agents of the station, Bonneville International Corporation, other area radio stations, or any entity associated with the contest are not eligible to win, unless the station otherwise specifies in its own discretion. Persons who have won in the last 30 days from a station contest or event may not be eligible. For a copy of the general contest rules, visit khdk.com. The PGA club fitters at the Hagen Oaks Player Performance Studio know that golf should be fun. They also know that players of all abilities will hit the ball farther and straighter, play better golf, shoot lower scores, and have more fun if they get fitted before they purchase golf clubs. Hagen Oaks delivers the same technology and major brands used to fit PGA and LPGA professionals. See how the game can be even more fun. Hagen Oaks Player Performance Studio fittings are available seven days a week. Make yours today by calling 916-808-2531. That's 808-2531. It's time to trade in and trade up at Northern California's number one Honda dealer, Stockton Honda. Whether you're shopping new or pre-owned, Stockton Honda has a selection and savings. Plus, get top dollar for your trade. Come in today or go to StocktonHonda.com. It's all a click away. Anytime, anywhere, it's all here. Country in the Park is back May 17th and 18th at Cal Expo with Brett Lee Gilbert, Dustin Lynch, Jay Cohen, Walker Hayes, and more. Tickets start at just 46 bucks. Country in the Park, May 17th and 18th at Cal Expo. For more information, visit CITPFest.com. Brought to you by Fitty and Fiber, Dawson Oil Company, and Good Guys Heating and Cooling. Guys, did you know your testosterone affects everything in your system, including how you feel and perform every day? Right now, Revive Men's Cell Sacramento will check your testosterone for free. Knowing your T level is the first step in understanding if you have low T. Your testosterone level impacts your energy, libido, sleep, weight, hair loss, mood, and even ED. Maintaining an appropriate T-level can change your whole life. Most men start to see changes in their hormone levels in their 30s. Get your T-levels checked today by local, experienced, and trusted men's health experts. They're in Midtown in the Cal Sutter Medical Building and also offer telemedicine appointments. Plus, with free shipping directly to you, Revive takes the hassle out of treating low T and ED. Schedule your free testosterone test, free exam, and free consultation today. Call Revive Men's Health at 916-365-4566. That's 916-365-4566 or visit revivemenshealth.com. Golf to Go is brought to you by the Hagen Oaks Golf Super Shop. Here's Frank LaRosa. Golf.com's Alan Bastable offers eight sneaky ways for stubbornly average players to break 80. First, play sensible tees. Hitting seven and eight irons into greens instead of hybrids give chances at fours and threes. Check the par. There's no shame in doing so on a par 70 course. Three, check the forecast. A day after rain can mean soft greens. Four, avoid big numbers. It's not the bogeys that will derail a 79. It's a couple of bigger scores. Five, you got to believe. Give yourself a pep talk and temper the feelings of gloom. Six, keep like-minded company. If you're a grinder, play with fellow grinders or play with music or gamble if that's your game. Seven, a little luck helps. Even tour players recognize luck. Eight, don't obsess over... 
Well, breaking 80, you're going to know if you have a good round going, so have your partner keep score. At the 18th tee, ask where you stand as it may affect the way you approach the hole. Sounds simple, huh? Now go out and do it and have some fun. That's your Golf To Go. I'm Frank LaBrosa. This segment is brought to you by Kia Vacville. Check them out at kiavacville.com. Sacktown Sports and subscribe. Everyone's favorite new podcast. Well, it's Chris Watkins' favorite. He's got more right. for us. And apparently, I'm look, we'll talk off season here. Why does LeBron keep talking about the Kings? Well, you know. It's uh, he, he's got to keep his options open and, uh, you know, maybe maybe he's going to come here to Sacramento or maybe he just appreciates really good ball and understands that, you know, Sacramento is a place where uh, real real ballers know ball, real ballers. Ball. Guess, yeah. Yeah, real ball. uh, also, the king yeah. coming to the Kings full circle to first NBA sense. game here. Go. It I'm, might I, writings on the wall, guys. Pretty much. On Bronny. I have sources. Bronny coming it. to Sac State. He By just the way, the Bronny portal. entering the transfer portal. I also saw that. And there's so much information out there, but I saw that he's entering the transfer portal, but doesn't plan on returning back to school. He plans on probably not getting drafted and signing a two way and just getting his work in, in the G league. How can you really? plan that? You can't plan that. That's not well, your somebody call. would sign you. I guess you're just assuming. And now the ignite doesn't exist, right? It's like the so options. Are, I've also, are I also saw photoshops with him. Well, some of them were photoshops. Some of them were from his initial visits, right? Cause he went on a visit to Ohio state. Right. I think I saw a photoshop with him in a Duke Jersey yes. and, and we have some sound a little bit later in the show from uh, Kate, not from Caitlin Clark, but from Shams talking about Caitlin Clark and just the, the game that she brings and the numbers that they had were just ridiculous. They shattered. They beat the World Series. They beat some college football games, some NFL games. So you get somebody like Brawny and, and you know, the, the other guy, Cooper Flag going to Duke and you start to build – some of those storylines within the men's game, because besides DJ Burns, there's really nothing <laughs> on the men's side and Applebee's. There's really nothing right. on the men's side, but LeBron's not only giving credit to the current Kings as he did on last week's episode. Now he's giving a shout out to the early two thousands. Kings. Yes. Yeah. It was really a, a conversation episode. I think this is episode three of JJ and LeBron's podcast and uh, JJ uh, focused this episode on spacing and just kind of how we ended up, with modern day spacing, they first actually, funny enough, Nate just made reference to LeBron's first game in Sacramento. JJ starts off the conversation by asking LeBron, like, how do you remember your first points uh, in the NBA? And he kind of describes it. And, you know, LeBron's been uh, LeBron's been known to have a photographic memory. So, of course, he he does it in perfect detail. Uh, but really, the bigger point is you know, where slash when did the the modern spacing kind of come to be? And uh, here's LeBron talking about uh, Rick Adelman kind of being one of the first people to even think about about how the game and how the floor is spaced and, and how uh, those those concepts uh, are, are still prevalent today. The East, and obviously, um, you know, they, 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 they had a lot of spacing, you know, in Sacramento in the early 2000s, but it it wasn't a lot of space. Maybe they just had some shooting. Obviously, Mike Bibb could shoot the ball. You know, uh, you know, Peja was shooting the ball. They ran corner splits. Yeah, they ran corner splits. They, you know, yeah. um, you know, Vladi, you know, could play the elbow, could play the corner, could hit the, you know, the three at times. See, uh, you know, see Webb from time to time was spaced a little bit, but he was more in the post. Um, you know, Bobby Jackson would fly off, obviously, for shots, but. Yeah, there you go. I mean, really, not not much detail in that, but really just Braun uh, highlighting the fact that, again, in, in an era where it felt like everything was bogged down in the paint, you would literally have like nine guys uh, on the floor that were all inside the three-point range. And, you know, even something as simple as putting C-Web in the high post and, and having Peja sit in the corner, have Doug sit in the other corner, run pick and rolls with Mike Bibby and just kind of, 
you know, uh, space it out, dribble, drive, uh, drive and kick all of those concepts that even Mike, I mean, Mike Brown talks about the spray threes endlessly threes. that all those kind of things kind of started here in Sacramento. And uh, it was just really cool to hear Braun and uh, JJ Reddick talk about how, you know, essentially the Kings were uh, the, the only people of that time doing anything that is uh, even remotely modern. Uh, Alan, I have a question for you. Who do you think LeBron James, when asked by JJ, who do you think LeBron gave credit to as the innovator of modern space, as one of the first people to really, like, wh what set off this wave of, of being obsessed with space on the basketball floor? No clue. Do you have any like I if uh, if I were to ask you even forget LeBron mm. like what 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 just feels like the easy answer for when you think about spacing why is why is the floor more spaced out now than it was ever before? Yeah, I mean obviously there's Steph and that that's one of the main ones. They were shooting threes beforehand, right? But, that makes a lot of sense, right? Yeah. You know, Wardell, Steph, and Curry mm -hmm. spacing it out all the way to the half court line. Well, we know that LeBron and Steph have. A little bit of a thing and i just i heard this when listening to the podcast and i wondered hmm how much of this is intentional and how much just 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 listen to how okay. long lebron takes to come up with an answer Here, here's how it sounded when did you start to feel like the spacing was changing in the nba um you know that's a, that's a good question I'm, I'm trying to think i i think the spacing started to change in the nba I think, I think Stan Van Gundy had a lot to do with it. What? What? And like he does go on to explain, like yeah. you know, he is kind of right. Like Stan did run Rashard Lewis and Hito mm -hmm. at the four and all that stuff. But just that long, bro. I'm like, bro. Like, just say Steph Curry. Yeah. And to me, it, yeah. I don't know. I maybe I'm reading too much into it. But yeah. I, in that moment, I was like, I mean, dude, just say Steph. Like the yeah. easy answer is talk about Steph and his gravity and how he's, you know, obviously, you know, that fool pulled people out mm -hmm. ten feet from the three point line, and that's why you have spacing the way it is today. But instead, he thought real long and hard about how can I not give Steph the credit for changing the game. Uh, mm -hmm. Stan Van Gundy. That's right. There you go. Good old Stan Van. Like, yeah. I mean, I'm not, again, I'm not saying he's even wrong, but mm. it just felt like he was doing a lot of work there to not give Steph credit. Yeah. You never know with LeBron. He might've already don't. felt really don't. like he's already used. He, he's already talked about Steph too much exactly. this year yeah. or, or he doesn't <laughs> want to start talking about Steph until after the season's over. Who knows with LeBron, but that is interesting. That's a bit of Igudala for me. Yes. That was a bit of a hey, laser beam pointed down. Who who's taking who's taking the shot? Stan Van Gundy. Stan Van Gundy. They drink too much wine on this show, man. You're Clearly. Looking, as as they're saying that, the wine glass is empty. They oh, gotta yeah. chill. Yeah. They gotta chill. Keep keep them filled. That's what they do on that <laughs> show. And you know, LeBron always finding a way to to bring up the Kings in, in some form or fashion. Right. And I, I we're in his head. Definitely. And you know, nope, there are people now that tell you if Peja played right now. Oh yeah. His That's numbers would piece. be crazy. That's a 30 piece right there. His numbers be would nuts. be crazy. Be yeah. Clay Thompson could never. Wow. Clay could never. Well, speaking of, yeah. And we'll, we'll play the Sham sound when we return. But speaking of, they want to add on to the all-star three-point competition also stefan diggs traded to the texans want to know how much he went for we'll let you know styles and watkins sacktown sports the only place you'll find keegan murray is sacktown sports out to keegan murray straight away for three and keegan pass down the triple hey sacramento it's keegan murray and you're listening to the home of sacramento kings sacktown sports your local sports leader Hey, it's Carmichael Day for my good friends at American Energy. Now, I've told you this before, but this is what we call extending a good deal. Right now, American Energy Heat and Air is offering an HVAC diagnostic for $99. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Never mind. They're offering it free. It's a $99 value, but you get it for zero. Let the American Energy team test your system connections and all the moving parts of that system to ensure that it's functioning properly. 
Now, this is a limited time offer. Call today to schedule your appointment at 916-520-9990. Speak to the company that has an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau that's been making the greater Sacramento area proud since 1981. 916-520-9990 916-520-9990 or AmericanEnergyAir.com. Tell them Carmichael Dave sent you. Call 916-520-9990 At Fisher Investments, we may seem like other money managers, but we're different. Are you really that different than the rest of us? We are. As a fiduciary, we always focus on what's best for our clients. What services do you offer besides investing? We have a team of specialists in financial planning, estate planning, and more. Your clients rely on you for all that? Yes, we ensure clients receive unparalleled service at every step of the relationship. Okay, but you still sell commission-based products, right? No, because we believe that's a conflict of interest. We prioritize service over sales goals. So then how do your fees work? We have a simple and transparent fee. That's a percentage of our clients' portfolios. So we do better when our clients do better. Wow, we're more different than I thought. At Fisher Investments, we're clearly different. Learn more at fisherinvestments.com. Investing in securities involves the risk of loss. Right now, Meta Chevy saves you $8,000 off MSRP on new 2024 Hampton Silverado LT Crew Cab four-wheel drives after rebates. A Meta Chevy exclusive. See dealer for details and 43024. See all the savings at MetaChevy.com. Together, let's drive. Sacktown Sports. Call or text at 916 916- Space, space, and more space. That's what the Kings want. Spray threes is always on the bingo card when Coach Mike Brown has some things to say. 916-339-1140. And now Ben has some things to say. What's up, Ben? What you got for us? Hey, what's up? Styles and Watkins. Love you guys' show, man. Thank you for having me on. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, hey, so when you were bringing up the spacing thing, you know, I started to think about big men that help spacing. And I, I want to say that, like, and you could disagree or agree with me however you want to, but I feel like since Vlade, there hasn't been a big man like Sabonis that, that has helped out with spacing, the, the passing ability. I feel like big men are, are typically overlooked with uh, when it comes to spacing. So you guys just give me your thoughts on that. Thanks for the call, Ben. The passing ability is huge, right? right. And, I, and I think he's. Assu- I'm assuming he means within the w- within the Kings organization. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, yeah, because obviously you it would can, have to be. You can bring up Jokic and and guys like that, but right. um, you know, I mean, maybe if you want to focus just solely on stretching the floor with your passing ability, no, for sure. I mean, because you know, tr- traditionally, if you're going to say, oh, that big space is the floor. It's shooting. It's always shooting. It's three point. It's, you know, Brooke Lopez can space the floor. It's, you know, even Anthony Davis can space the floor. But if you're just talking about being able to space the floor because of your passing ability or your passing vision. Yeah. I mean, Vladi definitely was, was one of the, I won't say one of the first because the, you have guys like Bill Walton, uh, Sabonis's dad, Arvidas. Absolutely. I, I would, was one of those guys yeah, for the Warriors. I mean, they would tell you Andrew Bogut for sure. Bogut. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Number one pick in the draft. People can't forget even mm-hmm. Draymond, um, you know, definitely was a, a continuation of, of what Vladi laid down, but not many guys. I mean, mm-hmm. even if, even if it isn't just Sabonis, I mean, it's a short list of, yeah, guys like Draymond, like Jokic, like Sabonis, Vladi's on that list. Even even LeBron mentions his C Webb in there as well. Um, if you can pass it from the high post and allow guys to cut off of you or play off of you in general, uh, that is not a a common skill in the NBA. And even if you do have that ability, that's where coach trust plays a major, major factor. Not a lot of coaches will trust their bigs to have the ball in their hands and make those decisions because it's obvious if bigs turn the ball over every fan, it doesn't matter how into basketball you are. They're going to say, why do you give that big oaf the ball and expect him to to handle it the same way you handle your point guard? So 
um, it takes it takes it's it takes a lot of people to tango uh, when it comes to allowing bigs to space the floor without shooting. But absolutely, I would say Sabonis is in rare air uh, when it comes to spacing with his passing ability. Yesterday, we brought up that without Malik Monk, the Kings really only have one ball handler in De'Aaron Fox. And to a lesser degree, you could put Davion Mitchell in there as well. Are we to the point where when you're watching the game, I mean, Sabonis has the ball in his hand so much. Is he one of the ball handlers? Is that a crazy statement? No, at this point, he definitely is. I mean, and he he has been it all season long. Like, there's not many bigs, again, who have the trust of their coaches to get the rebound and then take it all the way down floor himself and start the break yeah. himself. And that's the one thing that Sabonis, I would imagine he's tops in the league at transition assists or something like that because the amount of times that he gets that rebound – and is so much faster than the opposing big getting down the floor. He creates a four on five every single time he does that. That's that's really and that's something that funny enough Sabonis talked about last year when I talk about getting the coach's trust. That's something that he had Mike Brown had to trust him to do that. At first, Mike Brown said, I don't think that's really part of his game. I've never really seen him do that. And you know, Sabonis kind of joked about it, but was like, I know Mike doesn't want me doing this, but I had to, right. in practice, not listen to him to show him, no, like, you have to trust me. I can do this. I think if I do this, it'll unlock a lot of things for the team, and it, it definitely has. So I think Sabonis's ability is definitely one uh, that does go a bit unnoticed, and he is a really, really rare person in this league for his ability to actually run point guard. Yeah, when people hear the word spacing, I think the first thing they think is shooting. Of course. And I think obviously that's a big part of that, but just a lot of the guys that we just named, they they couldn't really shoot the basketball yeah. as far as sh- spacing the floor doesn't necessarily mean a big that can shoot the three. Not necessarily. I, I mean, it is now. It feels it like. is it but, is now, but, but it also have to can be, be somebody that can pass the basketball. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. If you stand at the top of the key, I mean. You know, it, it's it's a bit like elementary a bit, but if you run a high post, you know, it's it's the guy who has the, the best vision over everybody. And if you can if you can see the the passing lanes develop, yeah, setting up guys to to cut and you know, especially the way the Kings offense is ran, Sabonis is quite literally just standing at the nail right in the middle of everything, and everybody just he is the sun. LeBron says he's the sun, but Sabonis is truly the son of this Kings team where everything just goes around him and uh, all everything everyone gets is because Sabonis pretty much sets it up for him. Speaking of spacing the floor, we know somebody that can really space the floor and that's Caitlin Clark. And now Shams was on Run It Back on FanDuel talking about the competition, the contest that Sabrina Inescu and Steph Curry had right. last year last season during this past all-star game and they want to add two more people chris i want your thoughts on who they may just add at this point stephen curry versus sabrina Ionescu is very likely for next year and next year's all-star weekend guys it's going to be in the bay area in san francisco at chase center in 2025 and i'm told with caitlin clark and potentially clay thompson to make it 2v2 stephen curry clay thompson is splash brother I'm told St- Steph Curry is specifically brought up uh, potentially having Klay Thompson in this competition for next year. Could, it, could a guy like Damian Lillard be a candidate as well to join Steph Curry? But those two guys potentially against Sabrina Ionescu and Caitlin Clark, those are all conversations that are going to continue to go on in the coming uh, months and as we get into uh, the 24-25 season. Uh, Sean- hmm. Do you have a problem – and we can look up the three point percentages and made sure. threes this season. Do you have a problem? And what would what would be a better barometer for you? Made threes this season or three point percentage for Clay? Just at the, looking at the other people that could be picked. Yeah. I just want to know if you have a problem with Clay Clank. with Clay being selected or probably going to be selected. I mean, as the as the partner, as someone who's rooting for Sabrina and Caitlin, no, I mean I've got no problem with it at all. He helps you know balance the thing out a bit. We saw Steph is clearly at a different level of shooter. I think Clay being out there does make it a little bit easier for Sabrina and and 
and Caitlin to, you know, reach that mark. Are you being funny? Yeah, I'm trying. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I yeah, uh, I think it's, I mean, I think it's really cool, but um, it is wild that it's Clay Thompson at this point. You have to, the only I reason mean, it makes I, sense, it's the Bay. The so only reason I don't have a problem with it is because it's the, the, in the Bay. Reason. That's the only if reason. If it was anywhere else, I would, I would say, say. I would, I would protest. Yeah. I would have a and put lot Malik of in the dunk contest. Yeah. Well, Malik, does, but Malik has to want to be in the dunk contest. Malik's got to be here in Sacramento first. Yes, let's, if let's, yes, if Malik does the dunk contest, not in Sacramento, that's even worse. Yeah, yeah, because you could have did it last season when you were with Sacramento. Yeah, no, so but, uh, yeah, I, and I don't know. They're figuring this stuff out. Put on Pajemski out there, you know, just everybody's stop. favorite. They need to put coming in the dunk contest, <laughs> and they're figuring this thing out on the fly. But things can get. I don't want to say ruined, but things can lose its luster pretty quickly. And I know yeah. it's Caitlin Clark. I don't know if 2v2 hits the same either. I guess you, you just know? have to have Steph. Yeah. I, I, or or Sabrina, you lost, so just do Steph and Caitlin. That's what I would do. I think that's I think that's the the better route to go is is you know Sabrina and you know it's tough too because Sabrina's from the bay, so it even makes sense for her to be a participant in it as well. But I don't know. I think the two V two just, it, it, it turns it. It's starting to turn it from something that was really fun into something a little That's sticky. What happens, you know? and though. It is. Especially when it comes to all-star weekend. Yeah, absolutely. They're like, Oh my gosh, this worked. Let's blow it out as much right. as possible until it's absolutely ruined and nobody will watch it. Um, they're getting close. I mean, I, I think that it'll be fine. We'll all watch it, but it's not going to have the same, uh, the same, the same juice that it did last year. And, you know, because even last year I would have said uh, that they should have done another round of Steph and Sabrina, but I do think the, Hey, we just did it, got it over with mm -hmm. did kind of add to it as well. And I don't know if adding a second shooter, it depends how they structure it, but and they're, and based on the other like structures that they've had, I don't feel good about it. I definitely don't trust them. I, I definitely don't trust them. They're going to add some Doritos yeah. six point shot or something well, I'm like into that. that. I love all the shots. I don't, I, mm -hmm. I can't. I'm just, I don't, a I cool I'm ranch shot, which is a four pointer. That's right. And then a spicy nacho cheese Ooh, shot, there you go. which is a seven point. Okay. And that one's behind the hoop. Actually, that if one is behind the over hoop. there. And that's why it's worth seven. Exactly. Speaking about Caitlin Clark, we have the numbers here. Man. We told everybody we'd have the numbers from the showdown a couple nights ago at 12.3 million viewers the iowa lsu game had more viewers than any women's college basketball game ever the 2023 nba finals the 2023 world series the 2023 orange bowl the 2023 big 10 championship the 2023 cotton bowl the pac-12 championship the big 12 championship acc championship the peach bowl I, it just says Thursday night football. I'm assuming I guess every game. Yeah. I'm assuming one of the games is how I would look at that. Every 2023 college football regular season game, except for Ohio state versus Michigan. That might be the craziest one for yeah. me out of all these, you know, the, the world series, the NBA, those get tough. And I, and, and I, sometimes how they do it is, well, that was a game in the world series. I don't know if it was right. every game in the world series or that was a game in the NBA finals, but just a great day for everyone involved. Every NBA game last season. Yeah. Now this one says from sports TV and news and updates, it it was better than had more viewers in every NBA game last season, except game five of the finals. So only one finals game did it beat out. And then, yeah, as we mentioned the Ohio State Michigan game, and of course, this goes without being said, <laughs> every major league baseball game. Yeah, there you go. So the, I mean, and I know we were having the conversation last week, but also at these these media dinner tables about you know is there baseball players? How many baseball players, if there are any, that are more famous than Caitlin Clark? Mm -hmm. Feels like you know as this tournament goes on, that answer might become fewer and fewer guys. And yeah. uh, you know, I definitely think that. You know, I, it's obviously not going to be the norm for, for them to have the 12.3. It feels like that's probably going to be the peak of this tournament. I don't know if people are going to feel the same. I hope so against uh, UConn against uh, against Iowa. But uh, what what a great night. And what I mean, the important thing to me. Yeah, the number is fantastic. It's great that that many people tuned in. But the fact that the game lived up to it, too, because, right. you know, it would have been a real shame to get all of those numbers 
but then to get a blowout on one side or to get, you know, just a, a really bad performance out of both teams. It was, it was just the ultimate show. It was something that, you know, we talked about earlier living. It, it had a ton of expectation and somehow it met that expectation and maybe for some, it even exceeded it. So I think that's the biggest part of it is, is that the game itself was also really, really good for all those people. Coming up next, update on the A's, also star receiver traded. What does that mean for Brandon Ayuk? Styles and Watkins, Sacktown Sports. The NFL's leading rusher plays here. The handoff to McCaffrey, walks in the end zone. Handoff to McCaffrey, takes it right down to the goal line. He does his thing again. McCaffrey goes in motion right, backwards pass led by Juszczyk, a block there. Hurdles the man, 10-5, touchdown! C-M-C! You can hear all of Christian McCaffrey's touchdowns on your home for 49ers football. Sacktown Sports. Replace your worn-out brakes and save now on Brake Best Select. Brake Best Select Pro are import direct brake pads and rotors only at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Hey, everybody, it's Kyle Draper from Mercedes-Benz of Stockton. Now, you've heard me talk about my amazing experience with them when I got my new EQS. I tell everybody I know their dedication to every customer is incredible. Whether it's by text or call, they are available whenever I need them. And they're also a major Mercedes commercial van sales and service center as well. So if you're a biz owner with a vehicle fleet, Mercedes-Benz vans are a smart business move. They're rugged, sophisticated cargo haulers that qualify for very generous tax breaks. And it is a Benz. Your drivers will love it and your company will look great. Sprinters are available at rates starting at 4.9% APR. So go take a tour of the gorgeous new Mercedes-Benz of Stockton showroom a half hour from SAC right off of I-5 at the 8 Mile Road exit or online anytime at mbofstockton.com. That's mbofstockton.com. Dr. Ken Howachek and kinesiologist Kelsey Graham discuss the Good Feet Store. The foot has a lot of detail. It has a lot of complexity. There's a lot that can go wrong. A lot of problems start in the foot and end up elsewhere. Knee pain, hip pain, back pain. When aligning the feet properly, we can see relief elsewhere. And that's the beauty of the Good Feet Art support. It can place the feet into their ideal position and gives them the balance, the support, the comfort, and the relief of the pain. The bottom line is that the Good Feet Art support can be a highly effective pain relief solution when nothing else has worked. The feet have a really big impact on how the rest of the body moves. The knees, the hips, the lower back especially. If the foot isn't properly aligned, all of these joints are going to function incorrectly. That results in a lot of muscle tension and chronic pain. What I really like about the Good Feet system is that the right arch supports can put the foot in its proper alignment. So all the joints of the rest of the body will be aligned properly as well. And when the body's aligned, we can reduce the risk of injury and chronic pain. Visit the Good Feet store in Sacramento, Roseville, Modesto, Stockton, and Vacaville for a free fitting and test walk. Thinking of remodeling your home? Say goodbye to endless internet searches and visit Subcontractors United. Find a list of three pre-qualified and licensed contractors in each home service category. From cabinets to landscapers and everything in between, Subcontractors United makes finding qualified contractors free and easy with no accounts to set up. Visit subcontractorsunited.com and experience the joy of stress-free home improvement. Save time and money at subcontractorsunited.com. I'm Ken Korak with our first Green and Gold Report for 2024, brought to you by Xfinity 10G, the network made for streaming. Well, for the A's to turn around their fortunes this year, they'll have to play better defense than they've shown early in the season. Now, bright spots on the mound. Paul Blackburn went seven in the last game of the Cleveland series, three hits and no runs. And then Kyle Muller in the first game against the Red Sox comes out of the bullpen, five and a third, one hit, and six strikeouts. Want more speed? Well, Xfinity just increased their internet speeds, and they're faster than ever. It's time to get more out of your internet with faster speeds from Xfinity. Now through June 21st, get 150 megabit Xfinity internet for only $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. That's double the speed for the same great price. Click, call, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay with store bank account. Restrictions apply. Equipment taxes and other charges extra. After promo, regular rates apply. Actual speeds vary. From the power business technology Toshiba Studios. Your home for Kings basketball for over 25 seasons. No look, Bibby to Weber down the lane, flying jam. There's your play of the night right there. It's inside is Sabonis, a two-hand rip, a brilliant pass. 
from PRM Fox. KHTKAM Sacramento. KYMX HD2 Sacramento. Sundown Sports. This is Sacktown Sports. Speaking of some women's college hoops, Angel Reese is headed to the WNBA draft. Her time at LSU has come to an end. And this isn't a this is a pretty tough transition, but as we talk about things coming to ends and the A's in Oakland. Uh. It is looking more and more like that every single day. Chris, Casey Pratt. Actually, there's a lot of stuff that broke yesterday. I mean, Casey Pratt had some things to say. And you had you had Dave, Carmichael Dave, with some things to say as well. And right now, it's just a waiting game. The meeting was today or is today. I yeah. don't know if it's happened yet. And I'm just going to read through some of these some of these tweets from Casey Pratt today is is the sacramento meeting sounds like the a's would staff up in sac by using king's river cats front office infrastructure leaving many behind in oakland and this is what broke yesterday after we were after we were off the air this is from casey pratt so here's what i'm hearing a's met with city today a's meet with sacramento tomorrow a's have internal meeting Thursday, some employees have been told SAC is happening. Layoffs likely incoming. Stay tuned. 916-339-1140. It's very simple here. How do you feel? How do you feel? If you're in Sacramento or anywhere around Sacramento, if you're an A's fan, if you're a Giants fan, if you're a neither fan, how do you feel? There has been many battles and wars going on in social media of a lot of people feeling differently about this stuff and if you are not it's tough man I mean I I like to live my life and really put myself in the shoes of others before I speak on anything and to hear somebody that isn't an A's fan have a certain take or have somebody that isn't connected to Oakland or, or even if you have, if, even if you, you live in Sacramento, I I think I would be okay with that as well. But if you're neither, it's kind of hard. You can have an opinion, but it's, it's kind of hard for any, for anybody to say that you have any legs to stand on. I know from the Sacramento side, if you're a Giants fan in Sacramento or you're not a fan of, of the A's right in Sacramento, I do wonder how they feel because I I hear a lot of people and I'm not going to name names, but if you don't have an affinity for baseball, I actually don't know why you're speaking on this either. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because there's people that you don't care about A's, you don't even follow baseball, but all of a sudden you have a take that just has to be said about this situation because you're from Sacramento. So you know it would be good for Sacramento, but to me – I guess it's the whole, well, if they got to go somewhere, right. but it's just how you say it. I think, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt, no, but you're I think you just described me. Because, <laughs> uh, like, I'm kind of, I know how horrible it is for Oakland, but I'm kind of excited to have a baseball team here, like, if they're going to leave, mm-hmm. right? I, I'm, I'm not a big baseball guy. I think this could help me out maybe become a fan yeah. in, in Sacramento. I have never my whole life, never c- cared about baseball, never played baseball growing up until I started to work here. And I was like behind the scenes. I produced A's games here, a board opt A's game. So I was essentially forced to watch the A's play. Yeah. And if they're here, I know like my girlfriend doesn't care about baseball, but if we would go to games probably, and we would like, my dad would probably want to go like, it's fun. It's different in the ease of access. It's not Oakland. It's arguably a better stadium or the same quality. So I I don't know. I'm just I I'm pleasantly optimistic about what's going to happen. But I definitely feel for Oakland. But if there's no other way, it's like why why not? Well, so, yeah. yeah. I, I think that's kind of one of the most messed up things about this is that 
when they, I should say, if still should say, if they move here, it's like, uh, you know, they're not going to get any A's fans. They're not going to get Sacramento A's fans. You're not going to get Oakland fans. I'm sorry. You're just not like, maybe you're going to get the stray Mm -hmm. couple people, but I think that you would have to, if you're the A's and being realistic about the people who are going to show up to your games, it's fans of opposing teams and people who aren't there, who weren't previously A's fans. I think you've officially lost everybody. We've talked to people here in Sacramento. Agnostic. Like Nate's. Basically. You're getting you're getting Nates. You're maybe getting me on a case like, but you're, it's also on occasion. Like, they're I mean, the 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 A's are dead. I mean, if they move to Sacramento, the A's as we know them are dead because the fan base is not going to follow them to Sacramento. They might go to a game here or there as a you know, oh, I love this team for a long time. Here's my send off, or you know, they're going to be completely gone. So this one trip might be better than nothing, but you're not going to get people following the ins and outs of what's happening with the Oakland A's at all. I don't think anybody is going because you you've already upset everybody who was an A's fan, even if they were here in Sacramento. They're not, I don't think a lot of those people are going to cross the other side of the line. I, I just feel like I don't know who the fan base that you're going to actually get will be. It's by nature almost going to be people like Nate who were completely agnostic and then just say, Oh, they're here. I guess I'll watch them root for them. Maybe I'll follow them after they leave. I don't know how many actual current baseball fans Mm -hmm. are going to become fans of the team just because they move here, which is what I think part of the sell job is for Sacramento. So if I'm not mistaken, Sutter held fits 14,000. That was, that was the sellout when it was Giants River. Right. So 14,000. And we know, let's not even talk about that opening day because we know that was a a sham, right? The 13. It's a wrong number. The 13,000. The next, or that weekend, as the A's are are literally about to play right now, but that weekend, their attendance was at 5,000. I was going to say, yeah. Okay. So that is not even half of Sutter Health. Mm-hmm. That's in Oakland. That's essentially opening week, op- opening yeah. week, right, right, or the opening series. So now you go to Sacramento between, because the whole thing is that Vivek wants this to look good. Yeah. So between Nates and random, Opposing random people. Fans, right. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll put them in a different one. Okay. So you got a certain percentage that's Nates, right, mm-hmm. who are just agnostic, Hey, they're Something here. To do. Really not that expensive. Yep. Let's go grab a hot dog. It is what it is. Go Sacramento, right? You have them. You have opposing fans. And then you will have some ace fans that want to see them off. Some. Some. Is that enough for because you want you have to you have to pack this out yeah. because it's smaller. Mm-hmm. Are you at 14,000 every single night? No. I was gonna say it sounds like you're outlining one night. Yeah. Like if we're talking every night. What is it? How, how many games? Home games? 80, 81 home yeah. games or something like right. that? Right. Just split, what, 162? Just split that in yeah. half? So 80-something? 80 81. And it's, that's, I I don't think so. I mean, you know, like right now, I mean, the A's are playing today. And it who, is a Wednesday. The, yes. At, but it's the I Red Sox. 1245. Yes. But even then, I mean, a 1245 first yeah. pitch in Sacramento on a Wednesday, even if it is the Red Sox, there will be Red Sox fans mm-hmm. who show up. But is that going to be, what is that? Four thousand is that two thousand people? Is that one thousand people? Is that five? Th- and how many of those Red Sox fans would rather, you know, go to see Oracle Park and and go see? Maybe who knows? You know, ticket pricing might might play a big factor into that. But yeah, I don't know. I'm 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 not fully convinced. And you know, there is as well the factor of part of the fun of getting a team is rooting and following for that team. This has been expressed to me by many A's fans. You don't want to root for this team. Right. This team is trash. The, right. They're they're just not very good. And the issue, and when they do have somebody good, they send them back to that's the, right to to the minors. The issue, the issue ultimately is it's just people not fully knowing why things happened, what is actually happening sure. next. Because the take, the take of, and this is from this is from Casey Pratt, and I see some texts and some mm-hmm. calls coming through. Because Casey said this last night, 
There's a lot of doubt, and he's on vacation, by the way, and yeah, he's still he working. He said he's in the doghouse. Casey, you'll be okay. Trust me. You stop tweeting a little bit, though. Casey Pratt, <laughs> there's a lot of doubt surrounding the A's Las Vegas plans. Why do you think Vivek is so eager to bring the A's to Sacramento? It's a bit of a finder's keeper situation. People think if they are hosting the team when Las Vegas flops, they'll have the best chance to keep it. Now he continues. The issue is granting the A's owners amnesty for the next two to three years and getting them out of their jam essentially punches their ticket to Vegas. So the logic is flawed. Now I do know that there's still some things that need to happen in Vegas with the what the 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 edu- the, the board of education, board of education out there right. and and still creating that that stadium but I do believe that a lot of A's, or a lot of Sacramento people a lot of Sacramentans their whole take is if they're leaving anyway right why not come to Sacramento I believe based on what Casey is saying is they're not necessarily leaving anyway they're in a jam yeah. logistically because of the TV money. And that's this it's lets them raft. out of the jam. Right. And it gives them a life raft. And you're assuming, which is possible, anything yeah. is possible with John Fisher. You're assuming that this could fall through. And then Vivek just gets to add on and yeah. gets the Sacramento A's. But w- will that happen? And in the process, you know, I know there's some A's Kings fans be very confused as to how you feel about right. Vivek yep. as an owner. And this is right here. And there are a bunch of texts coming through and calls Tons. as well. 916, and I want to read this one on purpose. Oakland had its chance, and it's a dump. Keep the A's here in Sacramento, and I'll buy season tickets. That's from the 916. To me, that's just a lot of people, and if you don't want to do the research, don't do the research. Right. Okay, and you can have Ignorance that take. Bliss, there are people that are going to have that take, yeah. right? And for a multitude of reasons that go outside of baseball. Absolutely. But – it's not it's not that simple and it's not as if Oakland didn't want to play ball. Ne- they raised the money. Mm-hmm. And the A's didn't want to play to ball. The money. And they continue to raise the money. Let's get to Daniel who wants to be a part of the conversation 916-339-1140. What's up Daniel? What you got for us? How you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good. Good, good. What you what you got? Yeah, I'm a I'm from Sac, man. I'm a Love the Kings, all the sports here. But, you know, my question is, like, you know, if we're going to be the, uh, you know, side piece kind of, you know, dump off for the uh, the A's, if we're going to, you know, bring the A's in here, does that mean we have to bring in the, the crummy ownership that comes with that, you know? Yeah. Yes. And that and that's a great yes, call, Daniel. Great, Thanks for the yeah. call. And the answer is yes. Yes. They're not – they're not moving – they're not selling. As a matter of fact, you're in bed with them. Right. And not only and not by only the way, here, by the way, a, Kings, accomplice. Daniel King's fan, Vivek, last week yep. with Jake Gaiden on CBS, yep. he says straight up that him and John Fisher, who yep. is right now, if we're doing a power rankings right. for most hated owners yes. right now, at one point it was Washington. That's right. Right. Right now it's it's the A's. Vivek said, That's my boy. Yeah. They're boys. Yes. Allegedly. Yeah. He said it. He did. No, he said it. Yeah. But he then Tim it. Kawakami said that apparently that's not true. I don't know who you want to believe, but yeah, no, Tim, it's, it's not, it's not a great look. I mean, regardless of, of even if the King, even if the Sacramento doesn't end up getting this team, I do think there's going to be a lot of people who, who look at Vivek a bit sideways for this. Like this is cause there is, it is, it is undeniable that there is a shred of hypocrisy in this. Mm-hmm. It's undeniable that, You saved this team from this exact kind of situation, and now you're aiding and abetting this situation to happen to a different city. But since it works for you, this time it's okay. That's a really, really tough situation to to be in. And I understand, and you know, I get it. I'm I love Sacramento more than maybe anything out there. And I understand Vivek's gonna frame this in the hey, I understand. But that's how business is done. And at the end of the day, I'm trying to build out Sacramento and it sucks for Oakland, but this is going to make this market into something that they weren't going to get the opportunity to be else otherwise. And if we don't take this opportunity, it's not coming back for Sacramento. And so it it is unfortunate. And it's just a really weird push and pull that I I don't know which side of the, the, the picket fence, if you will, I'm going to end up on. Um, I keep talking to people and and I keep getting swayed 
back and forth, but I, I just think that it's a really, really messy situation that is only going to get worse if this thing does get confirmed. At the end of the day, if Vivek knows for a fact that, hey, with, if John Fisher, no matter what he does, he if he know uh, he's done yeah. with Oakland, then as a businessman, I could see why Vivek is saying, well, if this man is telling me that right. he's done with Oakland anyway, yeah. I'm going to miss out on it because some people might be upset with me. Right. Right. I, it's ha- I understand yeah. Vivek's logic, yeah. even if because it's OK, we're either going to convince them something's going to fall through or they're going to stay in Sacramento yeah. or we pack this place out every single night. The expansion thing, I, I don't believe. I don't believe in Rob Manfred yeah. and I don't think it's I don't think it's going to happen. Got to get to a break. When we return, continuing with the conversation, your texts are all over the screen here, and I will be reading them also, the sack chat. Also, a star receiver goes to Houston. What does that mean for Brandon Ayuk? And also, should Malik Monk still win six man of the year? Styles and Watkins, Sackdown Sports. Our first year as the radio home of the San Francisco 49ers is one we will never forget. It's a toss to McCaffrey, a cutback run 30, breaks 340, McCaffrey midfield, McCaffrey 40, 30, 20, and does get all the way down to the three-yard line on the first play of the game, CMC. Dino Mike! Congratulations to the 49ers on a terrific year. And thank you for so many wonderful memories. Jiffy Lube has a special promotion going on right now. Simply purchase a Pennzoil Platinum Full Synthetic Oil Change at Jiffy Lube and receive a $25 e-gift card from popular brands for food, gas, and more. It's that easy. Simply purchase a Pennzoil Platinum Full Synthetic Oil Change and receive a $25 e-gift card. So basically, going to Jiffy Lube can get you a free lunch or a pizza for dinner. That's what we call added value for the consumer. That's why Jiffy Lube is number one in the greater Sacramento area for oil changes. Visit JiffyLube.com for more details details and valuable coupons today for a precision crafted performance the decision is easy a new acura from acura of stockton get the driving experience you've been waiting for in a new acura get the best selection and customer service you deserve from acura of stockton shop in person or use our online express store at acuraofstockton.com acura of stockton will buy your trade even if you don't buy from us don't settle for less than precision crafted performance of a new acura from acura of stockton and acuraofstockton.com Join Alan Styles, Chris Watkins, and the Sacktown Sports Street Team on Monday, April 8th from 5 to 7 p.m. at Fieldhouse American Sports Pub for some basketball madness and their mouth-watering full menu. 1310 Fulton Avenue. See you there. This segment is brought to you by Kia Vacville. Check them out at kiavacville.com. Having a complex conversation about the A's in Sacramento. And and here's a take that, again, I I get it. This is from Devin the Dude and the 916. Diehard A's fans here who grew up at the Coliseum. I'm coming around to being excited to see Major League Baseball in Sacramento. I still hate the ownership, but the allure of baseball in Sacramento is too big. I want to go with my son to a game and wear our A's hats proudly, mm. Devin the Dude. So that is part of, and thank you, Devin, that yeah. is part of the, what is the three that we said? We said people that are just kind of agnostic fans looking for something to do, opposing fans, and then people like Devin who yeah. are A's fans. But kind of caught in a bind. Caught in a bind. Yeah. I do want to say, too, and, like, I don't want this to come off as wrong, too, but I do think, like, A's fans also right now are at peak emotions. Like this is not a, you know, like they're, they're going to say, there's no way I'm going. This is a travesty, you know, Vivek, I'll never support the Kings or anything he does ever again. And like, you know, like I definitely think that A's fans need to be given their room for, for kind of letting those emotions out because I've, I've been there. And at this point, you don't want to hear anything. I don't want to hear, oh, Sacramento is actually a nice, you know, a nice consolation prize if they move. They they just, they're not in the mood to hear any of that. They're focused on keeping the team in Oakland. And I, I do think that you might run into an A's fan here or there that 
just doesn't have time to hear anything when it comes to the Sacramento front. They're just so upset at how this team is, has been stripped from, from Oakland mm-hmm. that they, they really don't want to hear any of it. Let's hear from Scott, 916-339-1140, if you want to be a part of the conversation. What's up, Scott? What you got for us on Siles and Watkins? Hey, guys. Uh, pleasure talking to you today. Um, you know, I've been a A's fan, Warriors fan, Raider fan. So it's it's not something that's unusual to me to, to see a team leave, unfortunately. Mm. Um, I know I'll buy, I'll buy a block of tickets when if they come, for sure. Um, I haven't been following the A's basically since the Rivercats lost the uh, A's affiliate. So um, I'm looking forward to it. I hope Vegas falls through and we get a team. Um, I think it'd be a great thing for Sacramento. Yeah. No, thanks. Thanks for the call, Scott. So, yes, yeah, so, look, they're going to be people again. I think Scott falls into the same realm as, as Devin and some of the other and, and some of the other A's fans out there. Maybe you're just numb to it. Right. Teams, teams, teams are going to move and and teams are going to do what's best for them. And what what are your options if you're an A's fan? That's that's my question. You know, you don't want to be a Giants fan. I have a buddy, one of my one of my closest friends. He just decided he's going to be a Cubs fan. Just that yeah. he has no connection to Chicago. I mean, it's a guilt free pass. Yeah. Right? And to, he's and he's team. actively you know, prop talking against <laughs> the A's at this point. And I know it kills him. There you go. I know it kills him. Yeah. And, he, and I know he, he's he's going to sit there and, and say it is what it is. And he saw it coming, but I know it kills him. And yeah. I know that if they come to Sacramento, it's still going to kill him because he's still going to be right close enough to dry. Yeah. I mean, in, you know, that I, I'm kind of half tongue in cheek here, but like in a way could maybe A's fans turn this on the A's and, I, it almost sounds blasphemous, but like, do you consider like if you are going to pick a new team, picking one of their rivals? Like, do you become an Astros fan because your hate for the A's becomes so strong that it's just, I want everything bad to happen to that organization because they left and mm-hmm. I'm going to root for their biggest rival, even though, you know, obviously I've rooted against that team for a really long time. Now that sounds a bit insane, especially because if you, Flip it on its head. No Kings fan was going to become a Laker fan right. because they were that upset at the Maloofs. I don't think at least. Um, but no, I mean, probably out there. It does open up the window for, again, if you, you want a guilt-free pass to maybe pick a, a new team that, you know, operates like an actual baseball team, then then now is definitely your time. 5-3-0 from the 5-3-0. When the A's leave Oakland, I will stop watching baseball. I was a Raider fan. When they left for Vegas, I gave all my gear yeah. to the Salvation Army and stopped following the team. Beautiful. Sell the team. 5-3-0 if you are able to text back. I am curious, when you do something like that, right, like you did with the Raiders, do you have a new NFL team? Do you? Would you still right. root for a, a different baseball? Or I guess you say you'll stop watching baseball. Did you stop watching football? Right. Now you have a, a, a sports fan that Who's, can't watch sports. Can't watch sports. Right? Or, or, or is choosing... Not to watch sports. 916-339-1140. Let's get to Dirk, who wants to be a part of the conversation. What's up, Dirk? What you got for us? Good afternoon, gentlemen. And my name's Kirk, but that's okay. Sorry, uh, Kirk. Sorry, my... Kirk. Oh, no problem. The, uh, I think the bottom line is, is if ownership remains the same, the outcome would remain the same. Um, he clearly has demonstrated a non-willingness, um, the non enthusiasm to improve the team, regardless whether it's in Oakland, Sacramento, it could be in some obscure city. I, I don't think that would change. Now, if Vivek wants to go ahead and claim stake to ownership, then I think that many of the Sacramento rooters and perhaps some of the, the Oakland ones too would go ahead and jump in. But if the ownership remains the same, what, what's the incentive other than being a, a placeholder for the move to Vegas? No, thanks for, thanks for the call, Kirk. Yeah. If if Vivek at least becomes a part of it, it would be it would be confusing just as this whole thing is because Vivek is taking some power away from Fisher, but also at what cost, right? You go Thanos here, so it, it's tough, man. Somebody on the two hundred nine or from the two hundred nine saying I'm becoming a Detroit Tigers fan because of a movie. That that's. Tigers? Are they on their way? I mean, I know they got some. They got that's who. If you're gonna choose them, I mean, I guess you don't want to be a front runner. But guess, hey, yeah, you got You got to do what you got to do. When we return, continuing the conversation, should Malik Monk 
still be six man of the year to come as well. And also Stephon Diggs traded to the Texans. Styles and Watkins, Sacktown Sports. Last season, the Sacramento Kings gave us a little bit of everything. A Pacific Division type GM of the year, coach of the year, clutch player of the year, all-stars and all NBA performers. Plus, we got to light the beam. Here's a steal by Fox, a breakaway. He's got the rip with the left hand. What does this season have in store? Find out. Each and every Sacramento Kings game can be heard right here on your proud home of the beam team, Sacktown Sports and SacktownSports.com. If you're in the market for a new or used car right now, or if you just want to go see like what new technologies in the new cars nowadays, stop by and see my friends at El Gro Kia and the El Gro Vada Mall before you go anywhere else. As soon as you step onto the lot, you're going to feel like family. You're going to know why they have so many five-star reviews at El Gro Kia and why they're the number one Sacramento Kia dealer. Like, I love this five-star review right here. Quote, I could not be happier. My husband surprised me with my new Telluride. I love it. The staff is friendly, kind, and conscious. Took their time to find the perfect car. Thank you guys for the hard work. Great job. I love my new telly. There you go. That's just another satisfied customer at Elk Grove Kia. So in addition to all the five-star reviews, the finance team at Elk Grove Kia has over 100 years combined experience. You know what that means? Financing for everyone. And we know going to the car dealership can be overwhelming, but come experience Elk Grove Kia. They go above and beyond to make sure this is an automotive adventure for you. Check out what's on special and what's on the lot today at ElkGroveKia.com. Or better yet, come see everything in person at Elk Grove Kia in the Elk Grove Auto Mall. Elevate your golf game at Timber Creek Golf Course in Roseville. Just named to the prestigious Golfer's Choice 2024 Top 25 Public Golf Courses in all of California by Golf Pass. Timber Creek offers an unparalleled experience. Our revamped practice facility features a grass driving range, expanded putting greens, and a chipping area complete with sand traps. Whether you're a pro or just starting your golf journey, Timber Creek is the place to be. Visit us and discover why we're the talk of Sacramento and beyond. Unwind and tee off at Timber Creek Golf Course. Country in the Park is back May 17th and 18th at Cal Expo with Brantley Gilbert, Dustin Lynch, Jay Cohen, Walker Hayes, and more. Tickets start at just 46 bucks. Country in the Park, May 17th and 18th at Cal Expo. For more information, visit CITPFest.com. Brought to you by Fitty and Fiber, Dawson Oil Company, and Good Guys Heating and Cooling. Guys, did you know your testosterone affects everything in your system, including how you feel and perform every day? Right now, Revive Men's Cell Sacramento will check your testosterone for free. Knowing your T level is the first step in understanding if you have low T. Your testosterone level impacts your energy, libido, sleep, weight, hair loss, mood, and even ED. Maintaining an appropriate T level can change your whole life. Most men start to see changes in their hormone levels in their 30s. Get your T-levels checked today by local, experienced, and trusted men's health experts. They're in Midtown in the Cal Sutter Medical Building and also offer telemedicine appointments. Plus, with free shipping directly to you, Revive takes the hassle out of treating low T and ED. Schedule your free testosterone test, free exam, and free consultation today. Call Revive Men's Health at 916-365-4566. That's 916-365-4566 or visit revivementshealth.com. It's time to trade in and trade up at Northern California's number one Honda dealer, Stockton Honda. Whether you're shopping new or pre-owned, Stockton Honda has a selection and savings. Plus, get top dollar for your trade. Come in today or go to StocktonHonda.com. It's all a click away. Anytime, anywhere, it's all here. When I want to stretch out after a long day, my sofa needs to be comfortable, but it also needs to look attractive and inviting when guests come to visit. I am Frank LaRosa with a word about Naturewood Home Furnishings. We spend so much time on our living room sofas that we forget they're a focal point and a hint to our decorating tastes. Right now, during Naturewood Home Furnishings Sofa Sale, you can save on every sofa, including gallery-exclusive custom-ordered FlexSteel furniture. Whether you're interested in a new sofa, sectional, or recliner, you can choose from hundreds of colors and fabrics. Nobody has more styles and choices than Naturewood Home Furnishings. And when it comes right down to it, it's all about choices and always about quality. Shop Naturewood for the look you love at a price you'll love even more. Visit Naturewood Home Furnishings right now for this remarkable sofa sale. Off Highway 50 at Hazel, look for the water wheel. 
This segment is brought to you by Aztec Solar. Skip the sales pitch. Calculate your solar savings at yourpowersavings.com. Sacktown Sports. Call or text at 916-339-1140. Oh, man. Oh, man. Well, it took a while, but if you were listening to the crossover, the crosstalk from early this morning, it has made its rounds, and Big Bro had to come in and show some screenshots of something. I have, I have no clue. I mean, we have numbers as well, and, you know... Business is booming, but I guess, uh, I guess, what, did, what does he say? Oh, well, yo, actually, we should ask them, since it's Warriors out there, Draymond, and security speaks loudly. That's right. So, like Light I said. Beach. Yeah. Light it! There you go. There you go. As we were, Malik Monk, sixth man of the year. Chris, there's no way he falls out of it, right? There wasn't enough time for that. You wouldn't think so, but, you know, I know Nas Reed is is putting up crazy numbers over there in Minnesota. I think he's started to uh, to get some starting action in there, but, mm. you know, it feels like Malik has, has kind of let it, you know, he, I feel like his numbers do the talking more more than enough. And, you know, what he did all, all year, it shouldn't just matter what you do at the end of the year. It feels like Malik definitely, I feel like, still could, staked his claim for, yeah. for six man of the year. I can't think of anybody else who was – as impactful as him all year long. I'm checking here and what the odds are now. And obviously they update them ever so often. It's still Malik. Nas Reed would be the issue. Nas Reed would be the issue. Yeah. And then your boy, Norman Powell, but That's really right. it's, it's Nas Reed. And it's, it's actually getting a little closer. Malik is at minus minus one thirty, and Nas Reed is at minus 100. Ooh. Okay, so it's getting a little bit closer than we think, close. and it's yeah, probably it's beca- and I'm assuming that they didn't change anything because I was going to say it's probably because Carl Anthony Towns is right. Yeah, no, that definitely will play a little bit of a factor into it, and I think, like I said, I'm pretty sure Nas has gotten some starts here with uh, with Cat out, so I don't know how that affects things. Like, do you get six man of the year points if you're a starter, but you only a starter because somebody got hurt, and so you're right. Technically, not a six man. I, I don't know. So I, we'll, it'll be interesting to see how voters factor in that. And then, of course, the uh, I believe the 65 game rule doesn't apply to uh, six man of the year voting. So that will also be uh, I believe Malik still crossed the 65 mark, but uh, that that shouldn't play a factor into who wins six man of the year. I think Malik still got it. I mean, when you just talk about for even forget numbers, but just like sheer impact feels like Malik. Um, I mean, he was the de facto starter anyway. Like he he put up starter numbers. He finished games for this team. His importance is that of somebody who's more than just uh, your your typical bench player. I, I think he really does exemplify what the six man of the year award is about. It, it feels like to me he should definitely win it. Well, and yeah, the the thing is, I mean, the only thing is is if Nasri just goes off these last couple games, and let's say because of him they do get that one seed, then I could say, then I could see, all right, well, you know, we get it, but I mean, what Malik Monk has done and, and everything he means to this team, it wouldn't, it wouldn't feel, and I hate using the word fair, but it wouldn't (laughs) feel very fair Yeah, due to injury, especially when it was pretty close. It's not like it was halfway. Exactly. It's not like it was halfway through the the season here. Right. It's, It's literally, and what Malik finished that, 15 he finished at 15 and what five and a half God. the assist too that's the biggest thing for me is i'm pretty sure he led everybody in uh in bench assists as well so not only was he uh one of if not the most prolific scorer off the bench he also was setting teammates up and that's that's so much more that is asked of any other bench player like typically even if you are um, you know, one of the six men of the year candidates, you're mainly just like a 15 to 20 point per game scorer off the bench. And that's all you're asked to do. Malik is asked to be a scorer, but also set everybody up as well. That's just not, that's not typical. That is not usually what is asked of that position. And I, I just think Malik is the clear option. 
Nas Reed, 13.3 points per game and five rebounds a game mm. with 1.3 assists. So I would assume he's averaging more assists than, excuse me, more rebounds than Malik. But obviously Malik, as of right now, right. has him in the points category. So, you know, it's the least that everybody can do after how they did De'Aaron Fox and Sabonis. If if this if this goes south, and it would again be to somebody <laughs> on the Timberwolves because right, you had Carl Anthony yeah. Towns who who slid in there as well, and Malik two point nine rebounds, so he was pretty much right at three rebounds. Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's Malik. I feel like it is, and I'm looking at his numbers now too. Like you know, you got 15 points. That's third uh, in the NBA in terms of per game. Uh, you have three point percentage. He, you know, he wasn't the most prolific three point shooter out there, um, but even still, he hit uh, just under two. Oh uh, no, he j just over two threes uh, per game at thirty five percent. And then, of course, yeah, the assist numbers. Uh, Chris Paul and Austin Reeves are the only two players to have uh, more assists per game than Malik, but I believe he leads. In, in assist total. So he, he's done it all this year. And, you know, it's not like, you know, the Kings definitely aren't near the top of the Western Conference, but he did it for a team that desperately needed it. And again, without him, I if like if the Kings were in this situation, like you said, for a month, a month and a half where they didn't have Malik Monk, they're probably slipping a lot closer to the 10. I don't know if they'd slip all the way out of the play in, but that's where this team probably would have found themselves in a lot of trouble. I don't know yeah. how many other bench players hold that kind of value for that team. If Nas Reed missed a month and they still have Carl Anthony Towns, I I don't think Minnesota is going. They're going to hurt, but I don't think they're going to hurt nearly as much as what Sacramento would hurt. If That's a good point. Him, you know? That's a good point. And we're getting to around that time where we ask the questions. Oh well, what's the definition of MVP? Right. What's the definition yes. of six man of the year what's the definition of most improved Still this, trying to figure out the clutch one what's the definition of most clutch this is this is around that time when all of these conversations come about and i, I think it would be hard especially with to be honest with you could you make the argument that shams really i mean a lot of people with, especially because of the dunks and things like that, Malik was the most well-known sac or most talked about Sacramento King this season. Mm -hmm. And you talk about how some of the other guys have a lack of a brand or not a not a strong brand in De'Aaron Fox and and Domas as they continue to try to build it. Malik Monk, because of how he plays, yeah. it just pulls people in. So I think that might save him as well. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, yeah, you get all the highlights. I mean, you get the the big dunks, you get big threes, you get crossovers, you even get some blocks in there as well. Um, I, like I said, man, like he really fits everything that you everything that you would want in a six man of the year Malik brings. It's the excitement, it's the spark, it's the scoring, it's the not only scoring, but he also is is setting people up. He's not super selfish coming off the bench, and he has a really important role to the team. You can't draw it up better than that. Like that is the definition of the most important bench player of any team in the NBA this year. He's got the highlights. He's got the attitude for it. And, you know, I, I do think that it would be, um, you know, it, even though we've talked about how it might hurt him in negotiations, I do think it's a really good feather. And I feel like I keep using that term now feather in the cap mm -hmm. of, no, man, like I was asked to do this role. And not only did I do it, even though I think I could have done more, I was better at it than anybody else in the league. He better win it. He better win it, man. I, you, you said that Nas is not. So Nas still hasn't overtaken him as the favorite. No, he okay. hasn't. But, but he's it's close. You said 100. It's 100. It's it's 100 to 150. Oh, and okay. I don't. Th it definitely wasn't that close. Yeah. Excuse me. 100 Nas minus 100 Malik Monk minus 130. OK, gotcha. So they're both minus, actually. Yeah. So you can't even make money off of. Not wow. That's. I mean, yeah, that's that's that was FanDuel. MGM has Malik at minus 125 and Nas Reed at plus okay. 100. You have interesting Dr DraftKings at minus 135 and Nas Reed at plus 100. So there's only FanDuel is the only okay. one where they're both in the minus. Interesting. Well, I mean, I, I but if anything, I mean, that's those are all signs pointing to who knows. I mean, maybe if Nas Reed has a big week. 
you can sway some voters, but I, yeah. I would, I, I mean, the bigger point is I, I really don't think that Malik missing 10 games here at the end of the year should ultimately tank uh, what he's done for the entire season because he's just been so big. He's got a game winner, which I completely forgot about. Maybe the ugliest game winner yeah. uh, I've ever seen the, the one handed one footed off the glass game winner against golden state. Uh, what, what, what more do you want voters? I seriously don't know what else you could have asked for than the season that Malik gave. And, uh, you know, I can't, I, I don't know if six man of the year gives a speech, but I'd love to hear what Malik would, would give for his acceptance speech. When we return a little bit of crosstalk, a little bit with the drive guy, Styles and Watkins, Sackdown Sports. On the move, got somewhere to be? Take Sacramento Kings basketball with you. The Sacktown Sports app will let you stay connected to your passion. Never miss a moment of Sacramento Kings basketball with the Sacktown Sports app. It's Coach Doug Christie here to remind you, if you want a deal that's a slam dunk, go see the winning team at Folsom Lake Ford. Folsom Lake Ford is your truck headquarters with all your American-made favorites, like America's best-selling F-Series, F-150s, and Super Duties, or spacious new Explorers and Expeditions, plus a huge selection of Broncos and Bronco Sports, all in stock now at Folsom Lake Ford. In the Folsom Auto Mall, you can buy any new Ford Ford with zero down on approved credit, save big with low interest finance rates, and Folsom Lake Ford always pays top dollar for your trade. Check out the huge selection of inventory online at FolsomLakeFord.com or stop by the dealership to see their most recent arrivals. Looking for something special? Give them a call and tell them Doug Christie sent you. They'll help you out. Hurry to Folsom Lake Ford in the Folsom Auto Mall, your trusted dealer, my trusted dealer for over 35 years and counting. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile. And the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time. There's Granger, Offering professional-grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger, For the ones who get it done. Getting your biggest tax refund from Jackson Hewitt can lead to some spirited reactions. Jackson Hewitt, yeah! Jackson Hewitt is so sure they'll get you your biggest refund that if they don't, you get your money back plus a hundred bucks. Jackson Hewitt, yeah! Switch to Jackson Hewitt and we'll beat what you paid last year, even if you filed online. Hewitt, yeah! Ain't nothing to it. Switch to Jackson Hewitt and pay less for tax prep, guaranteed. Proof of prior year payment required when filing. New clients only at participating locations through April 7th. Terms at jacksonhewitt.com. Capital Casino has been serving the greater Sacramento area in the same convenient downtown location for over 20 years with plenty of close-by, well-lit parking monitored by security staff and offering the most variety of table games in the region in a safe and friendly environment. Best food, best service, and the best action that's Capital Casino. For more information on tournaments and gaming, check out their website at capital-casino.com. And please remember to gamble responsibly. 1-800-GAMBLER. Kevin Lewis of National Garage Door. Whether you need to repair a broken spring, install a new opener, or buy a quality Rainer door, National Garage Door is here for you. Call us today to see how we can transform your house with a new garage door. 638-4554 National Garage Door. Live and local. Live and local. This is Sacktown Sports. Styles and Watkins. <laughs> Doing a little crosstalk. Whitey Gleason of the Drive Guys in here. Whitey, I actually have a question for you. Yes. Alan, Alan By the way, can I say something first? May I? Absolutely. Really enjoyed your conversation about the LeBron pod talking yes. about spacing and all that yes. really that was interesting thank you yeah. appreciate it yeah, yeah. do Great. you have any thoughts off that oh yeah i know he hates it when we talk about the lebron podcast oh really <laughs> he hates deep analysis well of basketball. i mean it was great <laughs> that he hater. mentioned the kings but it's funny because i i understand your reaction about the steph stuff like yeah he, he probably should have said steph but i remember remember the year kobe and the lakers beat orlando in yes. the finals they were running kind of, they were one of the first teams, right. if not the first team to run that four out stuff. Yeah. I remember that. I was like, oh yeah. I just, 
Yeah. I I don't know if uh, LeBron was being disingenuous about Steph or not. Yeah. But either way, I thought that was a good answer. Yeah, I, I even said it. Like, I don't even think he's wrong. I just it felt like he was trying to think, you know, Steph is the first thing that comes to my mind. But how do I think of the next thing that comes to my mind? And, you know, yeah, Rashard Lewis. I mean, Hito, your your friend, Hito Charcoal. Jameer Nelson. Jameer and, Nelson, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and they obviously had Dwight kind of mucking it up a bit. But, um, no, I mean, it, it definitely made sense to me. Uh, I wanted to ask you, did you see Jerry West uh, is yeah. making the Hall of Fame for the third time? Right. I didn't know that was possible. How is that possible? Uh, I assume once as a player. Him, okay. Once as a member of the 1960 Olympic team, I think. And gotcha. Then this is as a contributor. Which is, I assume, like him being a GM is what that would um, mean? Or is it just a global ambassador it's a, it's of basketball a good question okay yeah <laughs> i assumed you were i don't know why i assumed you might yeah have that gm answer. slash a consultant there you, you know he did stuff with the warriors so okay yeah gotcha yeah i just thought being inducted three times into the hall of fame seems like something that is noteworthy and pretty cool i can't imagine anybody else has been inducted three times into one hall of fame yeah i think to your point jerry lucas only once that's right that's right and this man Whitey is working on trying to get Jerry Lu Lucas in town or on air. Yes, Whitey, did you hear the Draper call on the dunk? No, I've heard about it. Of course, like you guys, I was there. Yeah. So yeah. no, I have it. Nate, fire! Know up. what to do? Oh, Powell got caught up. It's sloppy right now. There you That's go. Good. It's good stuff. Yeah, it is, it is good stuff. And Keegan Murray, first time in his career, taking over 18 field goals in back-to-back -back games. <laughs> How did he make that other one? The hand it went know. up and it like oh, that's off right. His wrist. Yeah, I yeah, forgot yeah. about rolled that around and yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, that's what happens when you, when you're, when you're developing like Keegan, you know, you gotta, you gotta figure out different ways to score. And I guess that's, yeah. that's what that and was. Then, you know, he looked up and then I guess he's like, yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to act like I knew it was going to happen. <laughs> what have you thought of Keegan's playmaking? I know we kind of looked at each other when Keegan mentioned uh, his playmaking the other day day in his press conference and then yesterday kind of had a little dump off to Sabonis in that the pick and roll. That was a pretty pass. It was. It was a really, I mean, that's, Domas that's, gave what, him that same look you and I gave each other, huh? <laughs> what have you thought about Keegan? Not only, I mean, his scoring, but his, I guess, improved playmaking too. Or what? It, at least what it could potentially do or mean. I don't know how you feel, Chris, and, and dear listener, and Alan. To me, that's one of the things that you can't really teach. You either have that court vision, yes. which is not just seeing it, but just knowing instinctively, it's okay, that, that he's right. there, he's moving, he's going to be there, and the defender's there. And Keegan hasn't really had to use it much, and but it looks like it's there. Yeah, which I wasn't sure before. Right, right. <laughs> so it's good to just yeah. see that it's well, there. I know what you mean, because that was Sunday when he said, yeah, did being a distributor is new to me. It's like, is that like a you joke? had, and I think <laughs> you or Brendan, I saw a look at the stat sheet immediately, and then was like, you had three assists. Like, what are you talking about? Even last night, he has two assists. It's like, okay. Yeah. Getting ready for the Knicks, of course. And we'll, ah, we got that all going tomorrow. I mean, Whitey, I would say this, you know, we do prop talk on this show. I would probably take the under. Uh, <laughs> I think it's going to be a pretty gritty game tomorrow. What is he under 140? I don't know yet. Yeah, it's got to be something yeah. like that. <laughs> I just, I don't, I, I don't see, and and we'll get, we're going to get to the J, Jalen Brunson, Tom Thibodeau had, had sound yesterday after yesterday's game about all he kept saying was he's getting fouled. He's getting fouled. Mm. He's, he's, he said it like 10 times and then just, just walked here. We, we have it. He's getting fouled. 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 Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Hey, thanks. Thanks, Tom. And now that worries me now <laughs> because now it's makeup day. Oh. And everybody, he's going to get a bunch of calls. Yeah, maybe so. Did you uh, Did you hear James Harden after the game last night talk about the Kings defense? About the yes. blitzing? Yeah, and he's like, yeah. they did a really good job. There. Yeah. We're going to do a double team. You can tell he didn't want to talk, but he gave the yeah. Kings in a roundabout way a lot of credit. Yeah. And they asked not Paul George, "How do you how do you get him? How do you get Harden going?" Hey, I'm not a coach. Yeah. I, Next question. You heard that too. I thought that was so weird. Our guy Law Murray mm -hmm. asked PG in the uh, in in the locker room, 
He said, you know, how do you guys get James more going? Because it's been like a month since he's had a 20-point game. He was one of seven last night, and clearly they could have used a scoring punch, and I think it's a fair question. How do you get James more involved? Do you pass him more? Do you try and set him up? Do you tell him, hey, we need you to score? What Paul George says, I don't know. Don't ask me. I'm not a coach. I'm like, what kind of answer is that? Next question. He did say next question, too. Yeah. 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 Well, And we talked about it earlier in the show. Yeah, there are some people that I won't name from last night saying it's it's pretty much a thing that either Paul George or Tyron Lou will not be back next year. Maybe both. And they they wow. they have issues. Is this the last there. dance for the Clippers? Wow, did the dance ever so. did the <laughs> dance ever start? <laughs> it's been I mean, a long song. Didn't even get an invitation, Whitey. Yeah, Jeez. An intermission and stuff in the middle. We took a lot of calls, Whitey, really not too long ago on the A's. And mm. just really just getting the 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 pulse and the the feeling from everybody around and in actuality, not really people are upset that they're losing one to nothing. Is that what you mean? That's right. That's, that's right. right. Or I think they're happy that it's only one to nothing. If you <laughs> if you want the A's to win, and there is a a part of this, and Chris and I we basically broke down into three categories. You have the fans that aren't really into baseball, but hey, that would be cool for Sacramento. You have fans of other teams. When you're talking about filling the stadium, fans of other teams, and then you have A's fans that I'm just still going to be an A's fan. The question is that last one. We had somebody on the text line say, I, I want to take my son. I went to the Coliseum growing up. I'm an A's fan. The question is, once once things cool off and and Oakland is just fully out of the picture, if that happens, could that section be bigger then I think we're giving it credit for. Sure, maybe so. There's going to be a lot of people that just, I don't care about all that. I've got enough That's problems in saying. my real life. Yeah. I don't, yeah, it's unfortunate for fans that are hurt. I mean, I don't feel that way, but I would understand how some people would be like, there's a game down the street. I like baseball. I'm going to go to it. Mm-hmm. If that offends somebody, I'm sorry. That's your problem. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I Like I said, I don't feel that way, but I certainly understand uh, people who would. Mm. Yeah, it's just... Yeah, I, 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 to me, it's pretty clear. This is a Vivek hoping to scoop and score. Yes, you know? that's what Casey Pratt said. He said everybody, whether it's Salt Lake City or Vivek, they're bringing they they want to bring them in, in in hopes of he said finders or keep finders keepers. Yeah, something the falls through falls and we're already here. He also is saying in his estimation, and hopefully we can get him on. I know he's on vacation pretty soon. Why he thinks that that negates all of the Vegas issues. Cause I, I do believe that there are a bunch of Vegas issues. So some of, some of those, I guess the TV deal and stuff like that. Yes. You free them of that jam. But as far as I know, there are also issues within the deal for Vegas that have really nothing to do with what the A's do in the interim. Hmm. So, well, Sacramento doesn't care about that, right? Right. Yeah. They're just hoping that that deal falls through and then they'll have maybe a leg up on keeping them. Yeah. Even that is, you know, it's kind of a got to thread the needle on it. But as far as that was one of the things that's bugged me, all the talk of, well, we'll have a team for three years and we'll get to show we being Sacramento. We'll show baseball that we deserve an expansion team. Mm-hmm. And I understand that. But to me, it just looks really like that's a real long shot. Mm-hmm. How many teams is baseball going to add? Maybe two in 10 years and Nashville's going to be one of them. So there's a shot, but that's a real long shot. So I think the play is hoping that this Vegas thing falls through. We'll have them here. Vivek knows Fisher. Hey. I think that's the play. Yeah, no, I mean, the expansion thing doesn't really make sense to me. Like, that feels like, I mean, it didn't make sense when people were saying that that's what Oakland should have thrown in their negotiation. I just don't think that that's, I mean, A, even if you do get some form of, okay, we'll consider you, what does that mean? I mean, especially considering the source of what it's coming from, like, Mm -hmm. Rob Manfred's already announced what he's retiring in 2027. I can't remember what he's already got an exit plan here. I don't think that this man's word really means much at this point. And I I don't know why the Kings in that kind of situation would sell their soul for the word of John Fisher and Rob Manfred. Those are two people who I, those are the last two people I would believe anything that those two say. But I don't know what you guys have heard. We probably have pretty much the same sources. I heard today that tomorrow could be an announcement. That's what we heard. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I, I think for the most part, I feel comfortable saying, from everything I've heard, it sounds more of a matter of if than when. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I also kind of heard 
that or win when, when rather than when, if. yeah rather than i did i did sorry. kind of hear that last week too though so we'll see mm-hmm. but you won't have to wait to hear the drive guys we're just playing drapes uh call on just play it on loop. that's yeah. what i wanted to that's do all we're doing that's now. what i wanted to it's do our best show there it is There you have it. Thank you to listening to Styles and Watkins. We will be back tomorrow. But until then, you got the Drive Guys with Whitey Gleason and Kyle Draper. Draper. Until tomorrow, secure the bag. Like the beam. Did you miss any part of our live local shows? Don't worry. You never have to miss them again. Check out SackdownSports.com.